Danny Miller will be kicking the ball, and he will hit it with the wind at his back. So that'll probably help him. Danny does not have the longest leg in the league. Very dependable fellow. He started out with the Jacksonville Bulls this uh, season. And when Scott Norwood went down with a knee injury, uh, Miller was brought in here. And uh, Danny will kick it away. For the Birmingham Stallions, our game is off. Both teams 9-1. and one. And he got all of this one. Off all the way through the end zone. As Mark McCants went back, he tripped on the goal line. Well, if we're going to tally how many times we're right and wrong, Danny <laughs> Miller just proved our analysis wrong because he, he got a great leg into that one. Of course, he's got a lot of wind. That thing's, that flag is a huge flag out there, and uh, it's really waving. That's Chuck Fusina, of course, and he had a marvelous game last week as Philadelphia dominated New Orleans by 35 to nothing. The other people lining up behind him are David Riley and Kelvin Bryant, who's back from knee surgery and in good shape. Willie Collier, Scott Fitzke are the wide people. And Folsom is the tight end. And here's the first snap of the ball game. Go to a one-back offense and put Fitzke in motion. And it's Kelvin Bryant, decked at the 21-yard line. He picked up one yard on the carry. The offensive front that we were talking about for the Stars, they're big people. Brad Oates at tackle is 6'5", he weighs 265, Ron Coder at 260, Bart Oates at 270, Chuck Comiskey at 290 on the right side along with Irv Eatman 270, and Steve Folsom the tight end is 6'4 and 230. So it's second down and nine now for the Philadelphia Stars as we get underway. And again, they go to the same setup, double wide with Kelvin Bryant, the lone remaining back. Birmingham showing a four-man front. They've changed their uh, defensive alignment as Bryant has stopped short of the line of scrimmage, dropped inside the 20. Phil Boren, a 22-year-old rookie out of Arkansas at tackle, 265, brought him down. There's number 75. That is Dave Purifoy, and he is one of the gimpy ones in the defensive unit. Joe Cugliari, also a little gimpy. Mike Perko, he's healthy enough. The linebackers are Herbie Spencer and Mike Murphy. And they put five people in that defensive secondary, Woodbury, Ray, Evans, Gentry, and Clanton. And Clanton leads the league in pass interceptions with seven. So now it is third down and a little more than ten as they send in Tom Donovan to put three wide receivers in the ball game. And uh, you've seen it back to throw. Throws it short to Bryant. Get him out here one-on-one. -on -one. He's across the 30. Got a first down for Philadelphia as he goes to the 36. You get him out there one-on-one, -on -one and he's a tough man to handle, and Herb Spencer out of Newberry just never got a piece of him. Well, Herb Spencer was man in on the coverage, and he had a chance to tackle him a little bit earlier. But Kelvin Bryant turned on the speed towards the sideline, outran him uh, until he got his first down, and then Herb Spencer made the tackle. You need to be durable on a day like this of 86 degrees and 66% humidity. Donovan is now out. Ken Dunnick comes back in. He gives Philadelphia a double tight end alignment with Bryant the lone back, and Kelvin is tucked in quite close to the line of scrimmage, not that deep, which doesn't give him a whole lot of time to read, so he's pretty well committed to the hole that he chooses, and for the second time, he runs right into Dave Purifoy and goes down with no gain. Bill Bourne came in and gave, him a little, gave Purifoy a little help that time, and right now what we've seen is a Philadelphia team that is coming out and immediately trying to test the defensive line of the Birmingham Stags. They just want to see what they can get away with. But they're coming out in a predominantly pass-oriented offensive formation. Now here is David Riley in the backfield as they go to the eye. And David Riley is having the season of his life so far this year. He really had a big ball game out in Arizona. And since then, he's been rough. He's in front to block for Bryant. And Bryant cuts inside. Riley got no chance to assert himself as Kelvin elected to go in behind the pulling guard. Boren makes the tackle. Kelvin gets to the 42. Now, both teams on the season third down conversions are running about 49%. And uh, with all of his friends across the country, thousands of them, i got to tell you, the most durable man I know who's supposed to be retired, Scoop Hudgens, has just arrived, uh, having driven back from the Derby in Louisville. He's about the toughest guy I know. Ball is on the 41, where it is third down and five. Alan Harvin is now in the backfield as... You've seen his pass is away over the middle. The pass complete to Willick Collier. Collier has a first down on the Birmingham side of the field. Stopped at the Birmingham 42. Well, that's what Fusina has been doing. He's been doing that extremely well. That time it was a man-to-man -man coverage by the defensive secondary of the Birmingham Stallions. And Willie Collier just reads the coverage. He gets inside of the cornerback number 21, Woodbury. You see, he just runs away from him now. 
Now he's got an angle. He's looking for a little help downfield. He finds number 87, but <laughs> he just can't get the great block for him. But it's a big play for the Stars. It is now Riley and Harbin in the backfield behind Fusina. And I imagine they'll rotate a lot of people in and out of the day. This is Harbin carrying the ball. Caught from behind by Mike Murphy, number 56, out of southwest Missouri. Keith, that's one of those plays that comes about because of the, the, the defensive philosophy and the coaching. Spencer comes in and, uh, excuse me, Mike Murphy, number 56, he came in from behind Alan Harbin. A hole opened up inside the line. His job is to come inside the hole and pursue, and he had the speed and the quickness and the angle to make that tackle. He did a great job of reading and following through with his assignment. And there's a loss on the play of at least four yards, so call it second down at about 14 as the ball comes back just outside the 46. Herbert Harris, 84, is now in, and he's become quite a factor in the passing game for the Stars. 6'2", 200-pounder with great speed, and he's in motion. Fusina throws it out to him. He's got it. Got some help out there. It's Willie Collier. <laughs> Willie Collier was. As Harris came in motion to set up the blocking on that side, and Collier, drifting in behind him, took the screen pass, and the pickup is short of the first down as they get him at the 36 of Birmingham. One thing I'm, I'm seeing now, uh, Lynn Swan, is that is the Birmingham defensive people are indeed very quick. Uh, the Birmingham people are very quick. They have to be because uh, they're, they're playing a little short of manpower, the physical strength. But when they're playing man-to-man -man coverage, as, they've been doing, as they have been doing so far, it's going to open up some big holes. The corners are both out wide. The safety's in tight. And Fusina is caught behind the line of scrimmage. Gets his pass away, but he is in the grasp. He is down back at the 46. And it's Robert Gentry and Mike Murphy, the strong safety on a blitz, and Murphy, the linebacker, and Fusina is sacked back at the 48, where they're marking down. Real big play. They're playing with five defensive backs. You can see they have a number of people coming in on the blitz. They have a four-man rush, man-to-man -man coverage, but Fusina just doesn't have time to look downfield. Now here's a key man in this whole thing, as you see Chuck on the sideline, Sean Landetta, trying to knock that ball down and kill it inside the 20, and he's going to do it. And they get a good roll on the ball as you don't let it go in. They finally kill it on the one. Well, now that's what we were talking about, the kicking game. It can be so important. Birmingham's first possession in the ball game after that 51-yard punt will be at their own one. And I don't think there's a whole lot of mystery here about who's going to get the football. Joe Cribbs, who has run for over 1,000 yards already, just slants it over the right side, and he runs right into Glenn Howard, an inside linebacker, filling on that side, and he maybe got a yard. The offensive front for the Birmingham Stallions, not quite as big as the Philadelphia people, but they're very quick. Woods, 260. Adelette, 265. Banks at 250. He's the elder statesman. Mark Battaglia, 250. Pat Phoenix, 280. Biggest man up there. And Darrell Mason, the tight end, at 6'1", 215. Joe Jones is out of there now, and Ken Toller comes in. He's out of Mississippi, and they made him into a wide receiver of some stature here. The bigger man, they need him for blocking. Here comes a stout throwing out of the end zone, going for broke. And it's too long intended for Jim Smith, the veteran out of Michigan at six years with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Defending was Garcia Lane of Philadelphia, and Lane was right there with him, but Jimmy had no chance to get that when it was just too long. Uh, it was a good play call from so deep back yes, in the end zone, totally unexpected. And with the play action fact to Krebs coming up to the line of scrimmage, Cliff Stout was able to keep the defensive rush off of him. Now it becomes a sprint between Smith and Lane, and Jim Smith and Cliff Stout have the kind of rapport. Even if the defensive back is close, gives Smitty a chance to go after the football. If the ball had been a little shorter, Smith would have got that as Garcia Lane was all off balance when the ball hit the turf. He threw it 65 yards in the air with a little help from the wind. Now you've got three wide receivers in there on third down and nine. Ball is at the two. They send Cribs with it, and Joe, who played his college football down at Auburn, gets up across the five to the six, and that'll bring in the punter. Dave Ofer made the tackle for the Philadelphia Stars, and the defensive people now leaving the field, and in comes uh, the punter for the Birmingham Stallions, Bob Parsons. Parsons brought in is not averaging uh, all that high, 36-2. His longest has been 48. If he gets it up, though, he'll get some help with a win here. This is his third week with the team. 
Garcia Lane is the punt returner for the Philadelphia Stars. He's standing back near his own 45. Parsons gets it out, gets a good rotation on it, and runs Lane back to the 43. So Philadelphia is going to get very good field position as Garcia Lane returns it to the Birmingham 43. It was a 51-yard punt and a 14-yard return, and the tackle was made by Taft Sales out of Missouri. So the Philadelphia Stars playing on a shorter field so far as we had expected they might be doing. Start on the Birmingham 43. First down. Riley and Bryant. Fusina on first down to throw. Throws it short. Bryant. Kelvin Bryant, who is a very difficult man to get a solid knock on wiggles his way down to the 35 so give him eight yards but note that that was the first down play key that they ran a passing play on changing now from their philosophy of trying to run the ball on first and second down change it up a little bit they've got them thinking a little bit run they're going to put the ball in the air short high percentage passing to a big man like kelvin bryant you didn't get a chance to see the footwork there there was the key thing because once he got the ball it was He's just very hard to hit. He's like O.J. Simpson. He's never get all of them. Frank O'Hara. Here's Fusina staying in the air. Again, throwing to Kelvin Bryant. He goes down to the 30, and he's got a first down. So Philadelphia sits on the Birmingham 30 first down, and let us check in with Jim Lampley. Well, Keith, while the Stars are playing on a short field in Birmingham, the New Jersey Generals have taken it the length of the field in the Meadowlands. The Stars' Atlantic Division rivals going in on their first possession, sight to Sam Bowers from 13 yards out, 7-0 over Oklahoma in the first quarter. Back to Keith Jackson. Kind of interesting, too, that both these teams on the field here in Birmingham lost a game this year, both to the New Jersey Generals. Birmingham and its opener, but since they have reeled off nine consecutive wins, Kelvin Bryant, right side, picks up a couple, maybe three, so it'll be second down in about seven. The game that they both lost to New Jersey, number one, I don't think that Birmingham played the kind of game they're capable of, with Joe Cripps being on the sideline awaiting a court decision, as to whether he could play or not, really didn't get into the game. And, and Philadelphia gave theirs away. Oh, they gave it away. It was Five a turnovers. terrible game. And New Jersey, quite frankly, are fortunate to only have two losses on that column because they had some games where, frankly, it was only luck that pulled them out. Well, that's the philosophy of uh, Walt Michaels, though. Don't make mistakes, and sooner or later it'll turn your way, and so far it has. This is Bryant, pitched out. And he's gang tackled as he comes to about the 25. So they'll need, nope, we're going to put him down at the 26. So they'll need six yards as Herb Spencer came up very quickly that time to get him. Well, the Philadelphia look, rushing so far, seven uh, rushes and seven yards. Well, a little vindication for Spencer. On the first series of, of possessions by Philadelphia, Kelvin Bryant caught the low pass and faked him out and got the first down. This time, when Kelvin Bryant came out and gave him a little wiggle, a little waggle, Herb didn't go for either one and made a good tackle in the open field. Alan Harmon comes in on third down now. It reads pass here, and he needs at least six, maybe a little more. David Riley's become a pretty good pass receiver coming out of the backfield himself. You've seen it pulls away and shoots it down the middle, and he's got a man wide open. He's just stepped right in behind a defender, Willie Collier, inside the 10, and he goes down inside the five, first and goal at the four. Perfect pass by Fusina. Well, that play, Keith, was really set up by the short passes to Kelvin Bryant before. They know that Kelvin Bryant was coming out of the backfield, short passes. Now look at the linebackers. The linebackers were only getting about a six-yard drop. There was nobody, a big space now between the linebackers and the secondary. Willie Collier able to go in, in between the, the two, catch the pass, go back to the outside. Now he's inside the five-yard line. And Fusina is six out of six for 87 yards. First down and goal at the four. Harbin and Riley are the backs. It is Riley, the big back with the ball. Touchdown, Philadelphia. There's a flag on the play, Keith. Chuck Fusina is getting up very, very slowly. I didn't see the hit. Well, I think what they're going to call is roughing the passer. Yep, that's it. So they'll decline it and take the touchdown. Dave Trout already coming on the field because you know they're going to decline it. Defense number 69. Touchdown is good. Penalty be enforced on the kickoff. Oh, Mike Perkle, so he's calling the penalty and he will assess it on the kickoff, which will uh, further aid David Trout. 
because he'll be kicking into the wind. That means, again, that the Birmingham probably won't have very good field position if they are able to return the ball at all. David has missed three extra points this season. Last time we saw him was in New Jersey when he had those two long field goal drives of 48 and 52 and both hit the goal post on the right side and kicked away the uprights. The ball goes down off a high snap. The kick, however, is right through the heart. And so with uh, three minutes and 17 seconds to play in the first quarter, it is Philadelphia jumping into the lead over Birmingham, seven to nothing. And he had number 34, Jeff Rodenberger out there also. You look at him just putting his hands on the rear end of Comiskey, just following him through the line. But give credit to that touchdown, Keith, to Sean Landetta. His punt that rolled to the one-yard line forced the, Phil uh, the Birmingham Stallions uh, to play conservative on the offense, try for the big play, it didn't work. And then, consequently, when they punted the football, they got great field position, so the Philadelphia Stars worked on a very, very short field. Earl Gant and Vaughn Mansfield are the deep people for the Stallions now. Mansfield out of uh, Wisconsin, and Earl Gant, of course, out of Missouri. And kicking off from the 50-yard line because of the roughing the passer penalty. Oh, oh, boy, they had trouble getting that football. And again, they don't get very good field position out of it. Mansfield had the ball hang up in the air. He was hot-fingering the ball coming back across the 10. And let's see about it. Philadelphia saying, we've got it. They're still scrapping over it down under the stack. Now, Keith, I don't know if David Trout intended to kick that ball that high and not into the end zone to give his team a chance to go down and cover as we see they're still scuffling that's a uh, that's the order paid uh, buy a ticket for that wrestling match <laughs> all right and Birmingham's ball Birmingham won the match they won the match but by a short kick like that and high it gives his coverage team a chance to come down cover and it forces Birmingham to return it they can't let it go into the end zone and get it at the 20 yard line as a consequence they're inside the 20 yard line so the Philadelphia Stars going for the juggler right there almost come away with the ball on the 12, but it's ruled Birmingham's ball and we've got a timeout. Vaughn Mansfield was the man who hot-fingered the ball as Kraut kicked it very high on that kickoff and you see now the ball hanging up in that wind, he almost didn't get to it. Well, I'm sure he expected the ball to go all the way into the end zone. Right here it's coming out once, he pulls it back, he still doesn't have a firm grip on it, he's hit and he probably did fumble it. Now here comes Birmingham, first down from the 12. Last time they started from the 1. Carrying the football, it's Leon Perry. And Perry up across, well, uh, just to the 20. Right now, here's Chuck Fusina with Mike Adamley. Chuck, you executed a very nice touchdown drive. A lot of success with the short passes to Kelvin Bryant. Was that by design or a game adjustment that you made? Well, Birmingham was playing a lot of zone. They were dropping back deep. I didn't notice their linebackers. And uh, anytime we get the ball to Kelvin, we try to. Try to get to our best runner. Okay, you got dinged on the touchdown. A little uh, pass, uh, roughing the pass. Are you all right? Yeah, I'll be fine. Uh, just a little late hit and uh, going for next series. Okay, Keith. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. Up the middle goes Perry, the big 250-pound fullback out of Mississippi. And uh, he's got a first down for the Birmingham Stallions. So that'll give you some idea of the kind of authority that Birmingham uh, can belt you. It's not 250, 237. But that's big enough. That's big enough. They do it also very quickly. Excellent technique on that offensive line. Raleigh Dodge, of course, spent all of his tenure uh, on the offensive line while he was with the Pittsburgh Steelers. First down, Stallions, ball now out on the 25. Philadelphia leading 7-0, a minute and a half to go in the first quarter of play. Both teams coming into this game with 9-1 records. Philadelphia showing blitz, Stout gets it away, pass is caught by Jim Smith, and Smith is knocked out of bounds up across the 30 and just beyond the 32. <laughs> Jimmy took a little hit by number 47, Garcia Lane, and I, you know, I agree with the slight booze of the fans. He took this hit when he was out of bounds, a little bit unnecessary, but... Jim wasn't phased very much by it. A quick out, blitz control route, just getting in by number 56, George Cooper. Now he's out of bounds, and Garcia Lane just comes up and makes a hit. Yeah, that could have been a flag, couldn't it? Could have been a flag, but knowing Jim Smith, he has something in mind for number 47 <laughs> later on in the ball. Second game. down and three. <laughs> Going to run for it. This is Perry, and the big pullback. He will punish you. He came up and made contact with Mike Lush. And I'll guarantee you that Lush went back, not Perry. When you talk about a, an offensive line that traps in the encounter, you need backs who can read and read on the run. 
Now Perry just takes advantage of the woods, opens up a big hole. You see Cribs getting downfield, blocking Sam Mills. A great block by him. Number 86 Smith blocking, Le blocking Garcia Lane. That creates an alley for Perry to get upfield for the good run. That is first down Birmingham out at the 43. This is Joe Cribs. Cough set up. And it's recovered by Philadelphia. So Joe Cribs trying to juke and go the other way. Has the ball popped loose and it looked like Number 95, William Fuller, I think, was over there, made the hit. But Glenn, or 51, Glenn Howard was in that area. Well, actually, he just kind of turned it loose because when Kugler turned him around, he was going to go the other way. We'll take another look. He comes up now. He gets the ball. He's got a good grip on it. He starts to read. 67. Pete Kugler hits him, just pops way up in the air. And big William Fuller is right there on the spot. So the big rookie from North Carolina goes to the bench having produced a prize for the Philadelphia Stars and they're working at the Birmingham 42. Birmingham was second. Philadelphia just inside the 42. If you've seen it back, jumps it out here in front to David Riley. Riley's a big back and he works his way on down inside the 25 to the 23. David Riley, we said what a great season he's having so far since becoming a starter uh, a few weeks ago against Arizona. He caught a big pass Ran it down to inside the 15 that set up the touchdown for them to go ahead. Last week against the New Orleans team, he caught a screen pass. Went a long way for a touchdown. First quarter is over. So we've played 15 minutes at Legion Field in Birmingham. And the visitors, the Philadelphia Stars, have jumped out to a 7-0 lead. In those first quarter stats there is the simple fact that Birmingham's two possessions are headed at the 1 and the 12. And then turned it over and they really didn't have an opportunity to uncork their offense to, to have the chance to do what they wanted to. The field position dictated, and as you can see, Philadelphia has taken advantage of it. Stallion's now got to muscle up a little bit because you don't want to get 14 points behind uh, against this Philadelphia ball club because you'll be going home with a bent hat if you do that. And Kelvin Bryant picks up pretty good chunk of yardage on that carry, just sort of wiggling and dancing his way over the right side. He got about eight yards, seven yards on the carry. We also understand that Fred Anderson, a defensive end for Birmingham, has gone to the locker room to get some x-rays on a possible broken ankle. So there's another defensive uh, battler who is down. And Philadelphia staying with its ground game is going to have a first down as Mike Perko steps in to make the tackle. <laughs> so Kelvin Bryant is brought down, down around the 12, and if he is as far as the 12, that'll be a first down, and it is. Perko kind of crawled in for that tackle. <laughs> He'd already been picked out by <laughs> Kelvin. And then Kelvin decided to go back to the other, other direction. Perko was just getting up on all fours. Kelvin kind of fell over the top of him. So Philadelphia now in pretty good shape. First down on the Birmingham 12, leading 7-0 as we start the second quarter of play here at Legion Field in Birmingham. Very hot day. Well, not very hot. It's 86. <laughs> Brian and Riley split in the backfield behind Fusina now. And Chuck wants to throw. Gets it away into the end zone, knocked away. He was starting to feel some pressure, and it's a fine defensive play by Chuck Clanton out of Auburn. Clanton just got one hand on it because there was a man open in the end zone. Chuck Clanton leads his team in interceptions, but there was some great pressure on Chuck Fusina. He, scram he was scrambling back there behind his line, looking for someone to throw the ball to. They have a blitz on, which means man-to-man -man coverage. He didn't have a chance to get a real good look. On the scramble, he saw a man open, but watch Clanton. He just, well, you don't see him right there, but he lays his body out. If he had another half step, I believe Clanton would have stuck the other hand up and tried to pick that yep, one off. might have. Second down and 10 from the 12. The crowd comes up for the defensive effort. Blitz on. Dumped off by Chuck Yusina. Mike Murphy, number 56, blitzing. And he got through the track and got the Philadelphia quarterback. <laughs> Mike Murphy came right through the center of the offensive line, reached out, and just had Chuck Fusina's arm. Chuck Fusina able to get the ball away, but there was nothing on it. Just watch Murphy here. He's got someone taking on the center of the offensive line, all goes to their left, looking for someone. Watch him reach up. He grabs him by the arm, pulling him down. There's nothing on that pass. If there was only one man with a pair of eyes to see that one just floating yeah, in the sky. Yeah, boy, dangerous. Oh, real dangerous. Third down from the 12. Yusina steps away and calls timeout. 
Birmingham was bouncing around, and apparently uh, Philadelphia was not lined up, and Fusina was not in a position where he could call a check -off. Had two more days to prepare than did Birmingham. Crowd comes up for this third down play as Fusina drops to throw it. Gets it off, and it is incomplete. The intended receiver fell down. Scott Fitzke fell down in the end zone. Everybody's back there yelling at the official in that area. Dennis Woodbury was right there with Fitzke, and they get no call on it because apparently in the judgment of the official, uh, it was not Woodbury's fault that Fitzke fell down. Well, I think they're arguing on the part of Philadelphia that he might have been pushed down by Woodbury, and then Woodbury subsequently fell over the top of him. In any case, you see, they came in the line of scrimmage, looked it over, and called an audible at the line of scrimmage, probably had a couple of choices. Got his team set, had good protection in the face of a blitz, but still couldn't get the touchdown. Dave Trout now trying for the field goal from 29 yards. It's good. So David Trout out of Pittsburgh, University of, nails the field goal from 29 yards to push Philadelphia's lead. Philadelphia yelling for interference and not getting it. Number 21 will be Dennis Woodbury, the man covering on the play. Again, in the face of a blitz, you see Fushina has time. He steps in the pocket and throws, and it just looks like he fell down. I Scott Fitzke and... Possibly hooked their feet or something. Yeah, and he came across the top. I thought it was a good call. Seeing that, the officials did a good job. Pat Here's Trout back. kicking off now with the wind at his back. Gant and Mansfield are deep for the Stallions, and that's gone. <laughs> Hits the goalpost. Hits the crossbar, and it'll be touched back to the 20. So everything's improving. Their first possession was the 1. Second one was 12, and now they're out to the 20. And the 20 is just to give me. They've got to work into the wind going left to right. But they really haven't been able to show any offense hardly at all. So far, the bulk of the offense has been Leon Perry. Well, they've been backed up, and it's been pretty tough. But in a series of interviews, Cliff Stout and the other players in the team have said, this Birmingham offense does start slow. Second quarter has been a good one for them. Cliff Stout rolls it out, keeps it, and gets back to the 20, and that'll do it. William Fuller... And John Bunting and Pete Kugler. 67, 59, and 95 involved on the play. And the quarterback, that is a design play. It's just simply a rollout. And uh, that time, they were not able to affect inside blocking sufficient to get him turned upfield. Now, John Bunting maintained an outside position, forced Cliff to take an inside route where he got help from Pete Kugler and William Fuller. Cliff has run for 282 yards coming into this ball game. It's second down and 10 from the 20. Left side of the line. Mark Battaglia moves. And uh, bang. In comes contact. Or was it Buddy Adelette? One of them. Still second down. It was Buddy Adelette. He just probably forgot between the, the huddle and the line of scrimmage <laughs> just exactly what snap cannon was. And that, that happens from time to time when you're concentrating on what your assignment might be. Five-yard penalty backs him up near the 15, where it is second down and 15. So the Birmingham offense is still stagnant. The Stars are leading 10 to nothing. Both teams 9 and 1 coming into this game. Joe Cripp. Just no place to go. No place to go for Cribs. He gets out to about the 23, maybe. Here's Mike Adam now with Chuck Clinton, defensive back for the Stallions. Keith, this game could easily be 14-0 were it not for some outstanding pass defense by the Birmingham Stallion. Chuck, were you aware that Philadelphia might come out throwing, given the fact that last week they gave up over 300 yards against Denver? Yes, I was aware. Uh, everybody else has been throwing against us, you know, 250, 300 yards a game. And we were prepared for that. Okay, good luck. Keep it up. All right. All right. Keith? Thank you, Michael. From the 18, as uh, Cripps picked up about three to make it third down and 12, and Stout back to throw on third down. No chance. Sam Mills, 54. Sam biding his time, sort of hiding inside. He's not that tall at 5'9", 225, and all of a sudden he exploded out of the stack and 
really nailed Cliff Stout. Stout getting up rather gingerly. Very, very slow. He got a little help from number 96 downfielder also. You take a look. Number 54, Sam Mills, he's coming in. He gets hit right there, but he keeps his feet. Now Cliff steps into the pocket. He leaps at him, grabs him, stops him from throwing downfield because Jim Smith had come in motion. Looked like he's going to cross the field, went back out towards the flag and was wide open on that third down play. Now Bob Parsons, who's averaging 36 yards per punt, has got to kick into the wind. Pressure on him. Oh, they almost got it. Ball gets up there. The wind knocks it right down. Garcia Lane comes up on a fair catch call and uh, makes the acceptance of the ball at the 41, and there is a penalty flag. Well, that's going to be on number 21, Hardy. He was trying to protect his... The kick returner, and he just hit the man coming down to cover the punt in the back. That he did he uh, uh, was it a clear fair catch signal? I'm not it even sure that he made. It one. was a clear fair catch signal on the run, and he was calling for the fair catch on the run. He waved it as he was running up. Then there was a clip, and the referee was in perfect position to see it, and he dropped the flag. So the stars will be backed up by the play. You see, that's Gar Garcia Lane. He doesn't fair catch many. But when a punt returner has to come in to fair catch yeah, to catch a, a punt, signal. he should fair catch. He gets his hand up. Now there's right there is the clip. I'm sorry, then it's ten yards. David Evans is pushed in the back. He pushed him. It should be. Uh, a, is that considered a crack back? Oh. Not a crack back, but no, no, illegal no. block. No illegal use of hands. That's what it is. Yes. So it'll be ten yard penalty instead of fifteen. It looked like it pushed him, so that would have been the illegal use of hands, and that's what they call. We're told that Fred Anderson, the defensive end for Birmingham, has returned to the stadium. They took x-rays, no break found, so they, he's come back, and presumably will strap up that ankle and try to play some more. Pitsky, Donovan, Harris, Collier, four wide receivers in the lineup now for Philadelphia. And Fusina back with the wind at his back, dumps it down the middle, wide open! Oh, I caught it! On the rebound, Herbert Harris, and he's on his way to a touchdown. He was so wide open, he could have walked home. Then he got to fiddling around with the ball, and Ricky Ray almost came out with it. And then Harris caught it on the ricochet, and the Stars have a six-pointer. Well, the sky looks like it could give us some thunder showers, but right now all the thunder was in that one play, 51 yards. And he made it look so difficult. Herbert Harris goes down the center of the field. After the, the Birmingham stand defense blitzes, he's hit there by 27. Ricky Ray, the ball pops up, but Harris still maintains concentration on the ball. Then number 24, Chuck Clanton comes over to try and make a tackle, reaches up to grab him, and he misses. Dave Trout's extra point is good. So, boom, just like a shot of lightning from the horizon. Philadelphia put seven more points on the scoreboard. And at 11.24 to play in the first half, now lead 17 to nothing. Keith, every time Philadelphia's had possession of the ball, this is where they've started, okay? On their own 20, on their own the Birmingham 43, on the Birmingham 41, and their own 49-yard line. Now, in each case, with the exception of the one when they started on the 20-yard line, you're talking about working a field that's only 60 to 50 yards long. Here's a pass play, a big pass play. All right, by design, the receiver is wide open. By luck, it's almost broken up, but by concentration in Harris, he maintains possession of the football. Then here, a bad attempt at a tackle because it's a touchdown, but on the short field. And a quick play, and psychologically, it's destructive to the Birmingham team. Now they're down by 17 points, and they don't really feel like they've even been in the ball game. They haven't. And look at New Jersey. They're blowing Oklahoma away. 28 uh, to nothing. Willie Woodenhofer is the uh, coach there. was coach over at Pittsburgh Steelers. I know he's not happy about that. Well, if there was an area of... Uh, sus uh, Oklahoma is an expansion team, and, and all of the teams who have started... Uh, when you're only one year out of sync with the other teams, you figure, well, it's not that much of a difference. And it isn't until you reach this point of the season. But after a dozen games, you start feeling it because of the lack of depth. That'll come out to the 20 as uh, Gant makes the catch in the end zone and puts his knee down. So Birmingham will have it once again at their own 20-yard line going into the wind. And shock time sure, trailing 17 to nothing. Well, first out comes back onto the field. We know that the Birmingham team has played from behind football in the past, and they've come back, and they do a good job. They also can strike very quickly. 
pretty good but, crowd here at Legion Field, too. Great crowd here at Legion Field, but what you have to take into consideration is they're playing against the number one defensive team. You can't let them get too far out in front and then try and reel them in. This team, this defensive team of Philadelphia, won't give you a lot. On first down, the pass play to the sidelines, overthrown. Well, that's what the wind will do to you. He was trying to get that ball to Jim Smith. He had to throw it uh, going through the sideline like that. He's got to throw it one and a half times as far in order to get it to the man. And that time the wind just took it away from him. And when you consider there was a linebacker by the name of George Cooper who stands at 6'2", just in front of Jim Smith, he had to get it over his head, which really shortened the field for his throwing target. Second down and 10, Birmingham from the 20. Stop the throw, backside pressure, dumps it off, trying to set up the screen. They've got one set for Joe Cribbs, and Cribbs is going to be a yard short of the first down. So they're looking at third and short. Herbert Harris now with Mike Adamley. Touchdown courtesy of this man. You really flew past Ronnie Ray. You said, though, it was a, a pass play put in against that particular defense. What was it? It was a uh, it was a hook post pass pass right over the middle for me, and we've been uh, working on it all week, and hope hopefully we'll catch him in that particular defense they were in at the time. Now Ronnie almost stripped the ball away from you there. Yeah, well I saw him coming out the corner of my eye. I tried to grab it quick so I could cut back, but uh, he hit it and it's still it now, so you know I just grabbed it and took it on in. Okay, keep Cliff Stout trying to keep it for the first down and doesn't get it. Sam Mills knocks his pins from under him at the 29. Again, Sam just fighting his way along the line of scrimmage, and you don't always see it. But I'll guarantee you one thing, you ain't going to run over it. While I was talking to uh, Kugler before the game started, Pete Kugler, and he said he thought that most of the players around the league think that Sam Mills might be the best linebacker performing in the USFO right now. That time the defensive line and linebackers teamed up to string out that option play, and it didn't have the success like the old wishbones had at Oklahoma and Nebraska. Nebraska didn't play the good Excuse ball. me, Texas. Tom Arthur and <laughs> fall over. The very short kick, it takes a uh, bounce to the sidelines and trickles out at about the 40. So once again, Philadelphia goes with a 60-yard field. First down at their own 40. We are busy, folks. <laughs> Got them on both sides of the country. This is Kelvin Bryant. Breaks it big around the corner and slides on up the sidelines and picks up a first down. They marked the ball at the Birmingham 45. It looked like he would have no chance to get that far with it, but those, the big people up front, and especially David Riley. Watch Riley 35. Now, he's the escort. Well, he gets to the outside, and he sees it opening up. He's just following David Riley all the way down. You see, David Riley just dust number 34, Robert Gentry, puts him on the turf. Kelvin Bryant just coming back from arthroscopic surgery last week at 22 carries for 97 yards. Picked up 15 on that one. First down Philadelphia. Ball sitting at the Birmingham 45 and the Stallions are having their problems. Fusina gives the ball to Riley and he's hit at the line of scrimmage but sheds one man and keeps on pounding down to the Birmingham 37. He picked up eight yards. And he's only put down because number 27 Ricky Ray came over to make the tackle. David Riley was a player who was in the Pittsburgh Steeler camp. Played for us for a little while and always a tough, dedicated young man working very hard at West Virginia uh, to, to make the team, to play. And now this year he's getting a chance and taking advantage of it. Eight fifty-five to go in the first half. Pressure on Fusina. Herb Spencer's after him. Can't get it. Gets his pass off, and his pass is thrown out of bounds incomplete to Ken Dunning. Well, Herbie chased him all the way across the field, but he was one quarter of a step short of getting him. Well, you can just imagine what Herb Spencer's eyes looked like when he was chasing Herb Spencer. I got you. You've got nobody down for the throw to. I'm going to attack you. And the whole time he's thinking, wait a minute, he's getting away from me. He's a little faster than I am. And he's trying. He knows he can get him. If he just turns up field and he dives for the last second, he can't get him. Fusina throws it downfield, but his receiver is already over the out-of-bounds mark. Third down and two. Alan Harvin now in the backfield. 
Rodenberger lines up in the slot to give him that extra blocking back. They give it to Riley, and Riley's got the first down. Takes two people to bring him down as he pounds his way over the down to the Birmingham 26. And where does he pick it up, Keith? Right side. On the right side. Who's on the right side? Number 69, Chuck Kaminsky. Number 75, Irv Eatman. Out of Mississippi and UCLA, respectively. They just fire straight ahead. See Big Irv, number 75, blocking number 75, Dave Purifoy, opening up a big hole. Then David Riley just runs straight ahead, makes a good move there, but then uses his leg strength to drive for a few extra yards. It gets awfully tough this time in the ball game when your offensive team is rolling along, doing anything it wants to do, striking quickly on the big play, and your defensive team is taking the opposition three downs and out. That's a Philadelphia timeout. They have one remaining with 8.06 to play in the first half, and they lead 17 to nothing. Well, there's no question they look less quick because the Philadelphia offensive front is just flat knocking them right off the line of scrimmage. As you said, it's a little tough to get to the ball when you're playing on your rear end. That's right. <laughs> From the 26, a first down for the Stars. Makes it off to Collier. Bryant's going to throw the ball. Riley's in the end zone. The pass is incomplete. But David Evans is right up the back of David Riley. It's pass interference. Defense. Look at Bryant. Over there clapping his hands and saying, out of boy, David. Well, that's almost as good as a completion for a halfback on the option pass. <laughs> But I like this part of the rule in the United States Football League where the ball does not go down to the one-yard line, where it would do in the NFL, where it would do in college. I like this part of the rule because uh, both men are fighting for the ball. The contact was not incidental. It was enough to warrant the flag, certainly. Inter pass interference, defense, number 28, half the distance penalty, first down. So it doesn't necessarily become a crippling penalty. That's true, and he was not intentionally trying to uh, interfere with the receiver. He was just going after the ball, trying to make a good and a very difficult play on the ball. It turns out a 13-yard penalty because that's half the distance from the 26. If they're out in the center of the field or outside the 20, then it becomes a 15-yard penalty. First down, ball on the 13 of Birmingham, and the Stallions in trouble. Up the middle, Jeff Rodenberger gets a call to carry, and the 235-pounder out of Maryland is brought down by Dave Purifoy, close to the 10-yard line. Seven minutes, 45 seconds to play in the first half, and with a 17-point lead for the Philadelphia Stars, I think we'll see quite a bit of Jeff Rodenberger and Alan Harvin shuttling in and out of the ball game so that the starting tandem of Riley and Kelvin Bryant don't get too tired in this heat. Vince Evans has put Chicago on the board in their ball game against San Antonio. Bohannon has come into the defensive secondary now. Let's see if he blitzes. He is coming, but he runs right past the ball carrier. Then gets up and comes back and gets into the fray. And they have got Kelvin Bryant for a yard or maybe two yard loss. Bryant running around with it. Bohannon was blitzing, went right by it. And it turned around and said, wait a minute. And then all of a sudden, here comes Kelvin right back to it. The Temptations had a song out well, in the old days called A Ball of Confusion. A one line in that song was a, just a ball of confusion. And that's what this play looks like. Bryant comes in and cups. Bohannon misses him, decides to go the other way and says, whoops, look at all the red jerseys. I'll go back. And then he gets hit by number 70, his own teammate, Brad Oates. And then the rest of the, uh, the uh, Birmingham defense comes over to make the tackle. Look at the defense. They're just scrambling, building a wall. Probably. Ball is back near the 12 now on third down and eight. Third down and nine. Just inside the 12. You've seen it back. Gets his pass off, going for the corner route, and he's overthrown. Incomplete. There was contact down there as Dennis Woodbury got caught on the play by Willie Collier, but when the contact was made, they were off the playing field. Plus the fact there's a rule that if the receiver has no chance of catching the ball, and there's interference on that play by the by the cornerback, then there is no interference. And clearly that ball was thrown well out of the out of the field to play. Dave Trout comes trotting on now as fourth down comes up. And the Birmingham Stallions defensive people, they had their back to the wall and they rose to the occasion that time. So Trout now tries to make it a 20 to nothing ball game with another 29 yard field goal try. He hit one from that distance earlier. 
Jim Reardon holds it. And the kick is good. So at 6.33 to go in the first half of play, the Philadelphia Stars lead 20 to nothing. And they look about as good right now to me as any team I've seen in the United States football league. They certainly do. What you're seeing right now is a replay. 21 is Dennis Woodbury covering Willie Collier. You see Willie give him a little move to freeze him. Then he gets by him. And it's a blitz. If you've seen it, gets away from it. There's a contact there. But you can see he doesn't really have a chance to make the play on the playing field. No pass interference is called, and Dave Trout comes on to collect another three points. I mentioned a while ago that we have a pretty good crowd here at Legion Field. I don't know the exact count. They were hoping that they could get in the neighborhood of 50 today. Uh, one of the reasons, I suspect, uh, that we're uh, some few thousand short of what they expected or had hoped for, the fact that the 500-mile uh, NASCAR race going on up at Talladega, and they're expecting 110,000 up there. And that's only an hour drive from the city of Birmingham. The good old boys and the NASCAR cars, are uh, it's a big event down in this neck of the woods, I'll tell you. Hale Yarborough, those I high did, bank tracks. I worked the first race ever on the, <clears throat> the new raceway up at uh, Talladega. I don't even remember how long ago it was, frankly, but I remember Bill Fleming and I, and Chris Economaki covered the race. Long time ago. That was, the at that time, the most steeply banked major oval in the world. I guess it still is. I'll tell you one thing, you can't walk down it with uh, leather shoes on. Kel Yobo averaged about 202 on that track for yep. this race. Vaughn Mansfield at the five. Fumbles the football. Philadelphia's got it. Down at the Birmingham five. The sky has fallen. Mike Johnson covers the football. Jeff Rodenberger looked like the man had knocked it loose. Oh boy. Well. You were talking about takeaways and giveaways and Philadelphia leading the league with a plus 12 coming into this ball game. However, in the last five ball games, they have been plus 21 in the takeaway giveaway column. Right here. He's got the ball. And I was going to say that what the Birmingham really needs is a real big kickoff return to give well, them. What the world was 23 doing there? He just stopped. He just got in the way. <laughs> <laughs> is what he was doing, frankly, and uh, made a mistake. Caused the fumble, and Philadelphia again, four plays inside the 10, knocking on the door. Ball is right at the seven. First down and goal, Philadelphia. Bucino will throw it. He's sacked. Back at the 13, near the 14. Fred Bohannon. Fred Bohannon, number 41, played one year for the Steelers out of Mississippi Valley. He's been a starter, but did not start the game today. Played behind Robert Gentry. Now he's coming in, and he's a good physical athlete. 6'1", 205. Ball is sitting between the hash marks, 13 and 14. It's second down and goal to go, so there was a loss there of just about seven yards. It'll go in the books with a 13-yard play if they can pull it off. You've seen it getting pressure again, and uh, they've got him again. Again, it is Bohannon coming from the outside, Phil Boren from the inside, but give Herb Spencer some credit because it was Spencer that forced him to change direction. Well, as number 35, David Raleigh, picks up a helmet that was knocked off his head at the spot where the referee marks the ball. Let's give credit to the defensive coordinator and talent this football team. Again, not a real strong football team. As you see, Riley was just taken on right there by number 55, Herb Spencer. He forces Fusina out of his pocket where everyone can come in. And number 76, Bill Bourne, and number 41, Fred Bohannon. And again, it was a blitz, putting all the pressure they can on Chuck Fusina. Ball is back on the 23 now, where it is third down and goal. They started at the 7. And Fusina calls timeout. So that's the last time out for Philadelphia with 4.47 to go. And uh, give the Birmingham defensive unit some credit. They were being slapped around pretty well for a while. Seven-man defensive front as Fusina puts it up to Fitzke. And Fitzke is caught and brought down about the original line of scrimmage near the seven. So the Penn Staters hook up again on a very old pattern that's been used by football teams since the existence of the game, in the passing game at least. And Fusina put it right on the numbers, and it's just inside the eight. But it is fourth down, and Dave Trout is back. 
third time for Dave Trout to attempt a field goal. Two for two so far on the day. This will be a 25-yarder. The other two kicks were from 29. Inside the 40, David Trout's 10 out of 12. Outside the 40 on the two out of nine. Bearden gets it down. Trout gets it up in a hurry. And it's good. So at 3.59 to go in the uh, first half of play here at Legion Field in Birmingham, Trout now with three field goals, and Philadelphia leads 23 to nothing. Bob Lane, who has the backup quarterback, Bobby was warming up a while ago. Now, we saw Bob Lane come in uh, in the New Jersey ball game as the wind gets uh, Dave Trout's kick and carries it well off the playing field. Of course, Dave is going to say, that's my leg. That's not the wind, but nonetheless... <laughs> Bob Lane is a perfectly capable quarterback, and in the opening game of the season, when Cliff Stout had just uh, arrived in camp and uh, was really not terribly familiar with the way things were run here at Birmingham, Lane came on in relief in that ball game and played very, very well. Sure. They had the Birmingham possession that Swanee was talking about a while ago. One yard line, 12, and two possessions on the 20, and you see the results. Three punts and a costly fumble. Well, it's put-up time right now for him. 3.55 to play in the first half. Stout back. Get to the way to the sidelines. Intended for Joe Cribbs, and uh, it's overthrown. Cribbs had really had uh, not much of a chance to get his hands on the ball. And number 56, George Cooper, took the opportunity to <laughs> lay one on Joe Cribbs. Joe Cribbs is the kind of back he's so dangerous and explosive. Anytime this defensive team has a chance to make it a physical game with Joe Cribbs, they'll, they will take it to try and take something out of his game because he is so quick. Stout has not been sharp so far. That's Leon Perry, and he's down at the 25. The man who made that play was Bill Hardy, number 21. If Hardy doesn't get him, uh, quite likely Perry's got his first down. Perry turned around looking for a little running room. Hardy was coming up and diving at his legs for the tackle. Perry's not the kind of back that a little defensive back uh, wants to take head on. Birmingham needs to go north and south here. That's the Cribs, and that's short of the first down. They mark him a yard short. Brings up fourth and one. Now, they punted the last time on fourth and a yard yard. And Raleigh sends his punting team in again. Crowd hooting it. Hardy made that hit. Oh, 2.50, 2 minutes and 50 seconds and counting to the end of the first half. They have put no pressure at all on the secondary of Philadelphia. Not a drop. Not, not one, and... Surprisingly, because last year, Jim Smith in the second game of the season caught eight passes for 116 yards against the Philadelphia Stars. Lane is standing back inside the 35 of the Stars. Parsons has punted three times, 51, 31, 29. The two short ones were into the win. This is a low one. Lane accepts it and then goes down up on the 44. So once again... It's a short field for the Philadelphia Stars with 2.18 to go in the first half. Only a 30-yard punt into the wind. Second down, just about 10 from the 44. Bryant with the ball, going to the outside, and being cut off over there by number 21, Dennis Woodbury, and Herb Spencer, number 55. Bryant has pretty good leverage. He, he'll, he'll take you on if he has to. He doesn't want to most of the time. It's third down and about eight. A running play to the outside. If you look at Kelvin Bryant's stats on the day, appears to be a little conservative, like they might want the clock just to run out. We go to Philadelphia next week. I'm going to make Bryant take me for a ride in his new car. Yeah, <laughs> I might make him take me out to dinner. <laughs> well, now, that's pushing your luck there. I don't think you'll get that. <laughs> but I think they're going to try and get Dave Trout in position for another field goal. He was third, not third nine right now. Four wide receivers. You see the back. No pressure. Pass is thrown short. Bryant has it. Spencer misses him. Got a first down. And Woodbury pushes him out of bounds at the Birmingham 40. 146 to play in the first half. And with the ball marked down just on the Birmingham side of the 40-yard line, we're now getting a little closer, getting to the edge of Dave Trout's range. Remember the wind's at his back, so he'll track it up a little farther out than he might normally. 
depending on how much time was on the clock from this position on, I, I'm sure that Jim Moore would give Dave Trout a chance to kick a field goal if he can't get it in for the touchdown. Harvin and Riley now are the split backs behind Fusina for Philadelphia. And Harvin has it, and Allen can't do anything with it because two big guys jump all over him, Purifoy being one and Boren the other. That's 250 and 265, and he loses two yards. Hurry up offense. On second down and 12. Clock running at 120. You've seen the back to throw. Goes to the sideline. Got Collier over there. Willie's got a first down as he prances out of bounds. Down inside the 25 at the 24. I don't know what defense was called that time, but Willie Collier was on the sideline about 15 yards all by himself. downfield all by himself or 12 yards downfield by himself. And there were about four or five defensive people from the Birmingham team, but they were deep and way inside. I think right now, Chuck's just happy to nickel and dime it and get it on down to give uh, Trout another shot at it. He'll take the touchdown if the opportunity's there. He's 11 out of 16 now for 194 yards, and this is Harvin with the ball on a sweep right. Big hole over there, and he's got a first down. He goes to the 12 and out of bounds, stopping the clock at 109. Well, you're looking at a defensive team, the Birmingham team, that has played pretty good this ball game so far, Keith, playing on the short field. They gave up a big play, but they made some great stops forcing this team in the field goal. You've got to be tired. Right now, now yeah, I think right now you're looking at a tired defensive team because when you look at the time of possession, obviously if the Philadelphia Stars have the ball for 20 minutes, that means the defense is on the field all that time. First down, Philadelphia, Birmingham 12. <laughs> Pass is incomplete. Willie Collier was in the neighborhood, had no chance to get it. And again, the Stallion defensive people were able to put some pressure on Fusina. They were very lucky that time, Keith. Number 41, Fred Bohannon, lined up in the wrong position. And the last seconds, he started running over towards the slot, just where Fusina tried to lay the ball in to Willie Collier. Uh, if Bohannon hadn't got there, had realized he had made a mistake, Willie Collier would have had that ball, no one around it, in the end zone. Second down and 10 from the 12. You've seen has got a man. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Scott Fitzke. They are blowing them away here in the first half as the score mounts to 29 to nothing. He had two people in the end zone. It was just pick one. He did. <laughs> he yes. saw them both. <laughs> Probably, and he just went to the first man he saw wide open. He here as he steps up. While he's getting pressure, he steps up. He's got a little room to run, and as he takes a step up, he sees his people in the end zone. Fires it off, and it's a touchdown. Drop for the point. Oh, my gosh, it hit the left upright. But there's a flag thrown. He may get a second chance. Official calling the Birmingham, some of the Birmingham people back. Two flags thrown in the end zone. That'll be his fourth extra point miss. Unless he gets another chance. It looks okay. like the way the to. defensive team is coming back, he will. Well, that's one way. <laughs> I don't blame Raleigh. I try to get 14 out there. Where things are going. <laughs> so again, with the Arizona team down, and then Arizona had 12 on the team once. It didn't help them either. Trout gets it up. This is the third time I've seen a, a kick attempt by David Trout hit the goalpost and not bounce through. So well, there's uh, one mark in his stats column that will not go in there as he gets a second chance. Bearden gets it down, and this time Trout drills it. So David Trout now has scored 12 points in this first half of play with exactly one minute to go, and the Philadelphia Stars are leading 30 to nothing, and that I would not have in my wildest imagination expected this to be happening. Well, when you look at this game, and, and we said it at the top of our show, it's, it's two teams that were more similar than, than different coming into the ball game. 
Both of them matched up extremely well. And on paper, one of those games, it should have been a great contest. But here, in the first half, one of the things we pointed out as an obvious strength for the Philadelphia Stars, the kicking game and their special teams came through for them and helped this team get on the scoreboard quickly. The turnovers by the Birmingham Stallions have, again, been converted into great field position and scores. David Trout coming through with his 12 points. There's Vulcan. That's a statue of the god of fire out of Greek mythology that stands over Vulcan Park. Now, right now, they need a little fire in this offense. <laughs> they certainly do. Sometimes a kick return can be a turnaround kind of a, a thing. It can Dave Trout jack put, up a team. The offense certainly ought to be rested. Yeah, Dave Trout puts it out of the end zone. You, you don't okay. get a chance. Nope. Stop back. Gets it away. Joey Jones. First time little Joey seen the ball all day, and he's out to the 41. First time he aired one out in Joey Jones' direction. Got to throw it north and south. Jones is 5'8", 165. Just ducked right into the open spot. Cliff hit him. And you can't throw it high when you're only 5'8", too. <laughs> he drilled that one right into his chest. 53 seconds to play in the first half. That pass is complete to Ken Kohler. And Kohler's got another first down. Philadelphia, obviously, is playing prevent defense now. They've got their safeties back there playing center field. The corners are giving a little more cushion. And why wouldn't they, leading 30 to nothing. And uh, only 40 seconds to play. And Cliff Stout's taking advantage of it. And he's not going real deep. He's throwing the intermediate routes in between the deep coverage and the linebacker drop. Passes away. That's in the crowd. Kohler was over there. And covering was uh, Garcia Lane. Well, Cliff, I think, felt a little pressure on him. He, although he was getting very good protection, his receivers were completely covered. And instead of wasting time scrambling, he made a conscious decision to put the ball out of bounds smart move on this drive and again to say going from left to right you're playing into a very stiff little breeze I think whipping that flag is probably 15 miles an hour blitz on Joe Cribb and Joe gets inside the 40 to about the 37 now Birmingham will spend one of its timeouts so the Stallions now, they have uh, two left. And let's check in for a moment with Mike Adamley. Keith, as you well know, one man who's had an outstanding afternoon, David Riley. Sometimes, David, however, the worst thing that can ever happen to a football team is, is to get a big like this, lead like this so early in the game. Yes, but uh, we know that uh, we have to come out here and really uh, execute against Birmingham because they have the tendency to come back on the team. So hopefully we can just keep the momentum going into the second half. One of the stars' uh, strong points this afternoon, the offensive line. They have done a whale of a job opening up holes for you and Kelvin. Yes, they have. I just hope they can keep it up the second half. Hi, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, tired. I'm tired for real now, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Keith and Lynn? <laughs> well, David getting on me a little bit there in the Arizona game when he caught a pass and took it on a good run in down inside the five. I commented on the two series after that that he was still tired from that <laughs> one catch. Uh, I know he's tired now that he, he's doing a good job. Right now, the two coaches right now figuring just what their next moves are going to be. Raleigh, of course, will probably just have to put the ball in the air. Third down and four. And it's a long four. Jim Smith, Ken Toller, Joey Jones are the white people. You always figure Cribs is available for a pass as well. Stout takes off, gets away, gets his first down. Cliff Stout runs for the first down at the Philadelphia 30. That stops the clock to move the chains at 19 seconds to play in the first half. Uh, he had some thundering hooves right behind him. 54, Sam Mills. He came in. Birmingham gets set. Stout quickly bangs one. Oh, oh boy, he's lucky to get that back. Sam Mills almost had himself an interception. Trying to get that one, 86, Jim Smith. Now you've got 13 seconds to play. As Smith lining up right now, he gets an inside position on Antonio Gibson, but then Sam Mills is coming across to give Gibson help. Good defensive scheme for the Philadelphia Stars. 
Daryl Mason comes in now and Toler comes out. Mason's a good pass receiver. He came out of Arkansas. Birmingham's all screwed up. Joe Cribb started out. Ken Toler starts back on and they have to spend the time out. They have one remaining that nobody knew where they were supposed to be or what play they wanted called. So 13 seconds remain while Stout comes to the sidelines and try to sort it out. 13 seconds now for Stout on second down and 10 from the Philadelphia 30. He goes short. Oh, Leon Perry had it in his hands and dropped it. Well, he had Jim Smith and Joy Jones on the same side of the field. Joy Jones going deep, just shading the numbers on the field. He had Jimmy Smith coming inside and breaking to the outside, looking for like looking for a flag route. But he sent Leon Perry, number 30, down the middle. Those two receivers helped create the big hole, and Perry just started to take off before the ball had gotten to him and in his hands. Perry stays in, Cribs comes out. They send in now all of the wide people, Smith, Jones, Toller, Mason. Big Six. Ben. Toller and Mason. All the receivers on one side of the field. Throw it up to the corner. I think it's intercepted. No, incomplete. Calling incomplete. Garcia Lane was in the middle and looked like the man had a chance to pick it off. And there's still two seconds left on the clock. It's fourth down. What'd you call that, Big Ben? Oh, we used to call it Big Ben in Pittsburgh. You send all the receivers on one side of the field. You throw the ball up. You have one guy kind of hanging back. Everybody else would go up. If you couldn't grab it, at least tip it up in the air, and maybe you could catch it. Danny Miller comes out. He's trying to put some points on the board for Birmingham in what has been a desperate first half for them. His previous long of 32 yards, this one is from 47 into the win. That's a lot of leg. By golly, he drilled it. He drilled that one. 47-yard field goal by Danny Miller as time runs out in the first half and the Birmingham Stallions at least get on the scoreboard in the first half. 30-3, to your score, Philadelphia. Back with the halftime activities after this mess. Something about Philadelphia brings out the best in New Jersey. When the Stars play well, the Generals also seem to play well at the opposite end of the eastern spectrum over here. And New Jersey is doing it again today with a 28-3 lead at halftime over the Oklahoma Outlaws. Let's take a look at how that transpired. First drive of the day, the Generals went in, sight to Sam Bowers from 13 yards out. That made it 7-0 New Jersey after the first possession. And then moments later, Herschel Walker broke a big one. One of the few times he has done this in his two-year USFL career, you saw the broken tackle, the 62-yard touchdown run down the sidelines, gave Walker 87 yards halfway through the first quarter in New Jersey, a 14-0 lead. Then, a little bit later, the Generals with the ball again, sight looking to Jeff Speck, who has emerged as an outstanding receiver for New Jersey. This pass of 46 yards put the Generals back into scoring territory. Moments later, Sight found Maurice Carthen in the end zone. Hard to tell whether Carthen was the intended receiver. Clarence Collins was right behind him. Nevertheless, a TD and a 21-0 lead. Doug Williams only threw one interception in the first half, but it turned out to hurt. Jim LeClaire picking the ball off, moving New Jersey back again into scoring territory. And moments after that, the Generals capitalized with a two-yard walker run for a touchdown, which made it 28-0 at the time. It's now 28-3. Walker is over 100 yards in the first half. Brian Seip, 5 of 6 for 98 yards and two touchdowns. Houston Gamblers are at Michigan to take on the Panthers. The Panthers, losers of four in a row, showed some signs of life early, and they have gotten a halftime lead in this ballgame. In the first possession, the Panthers were unable to score, but later they got the football back, and Bobby Hebert take them in on this 13-yard touchdown pass to Ken Lacey, 7-0 Michigan in the first quarter. Second quarter, Bear found Walter Broughton, the man who has replaced Anthony Carter on the flank for Michigan. Four-yard touchdown pass, it was 14-0, favor of the Panthers. Then Jim Kelly hit Ricky Sanders on the sideline. <clears throat> yes, John Corker, that's your man. He's gotten behind you. Sanders went into the end zone from 37 yards out, and Michigan's lead was trimmed to 14-7. That's the way it stands in that ball game at the half. Chicago Blitz at San Antonio Gunslingers. The Gunslingers are coming up with one of their better efforts and lead that ball game 20-7 in the third quarter. Memphis Showboats at Washington Federals. The game is in Washington, but the Showboats are trailing the Federals 3-0 at the half. Washington looking for only its second win of the season. Tomorrow night, it will be the Arizona Wranglers against the New Orleans Breakers. The Breakers are getting a piece of good fortune today if Birmingham cannot come back 
to mount a challenge against Philadelphia, Arizona can move within two games of the Denver Gold in the Pacific Division if they can score a victory in the Louisiana Superdome. The headstones for the second half, for the first half, Keith, uh, with Philadelphia just completely dominating this game, dominating through the air, passing the football because the Birmingham defense has been tough against the run. You see they only have 68 yards there. That means in the second half, because they do have the lead, they will try, try and really establish more of a running game. The two turnovers, real big, uh, going against Birmingham as a factor in this ball game. And of course, you don't see the stats for the kicking game, which has been an important factor for the Philadelphia Stars. Birmingham probably, I think it's fair to put it this way, they'll be playing for several things, obviously, to start the second half, and they will get the football. First, they'll be playing for dignity. With that will come confidence, and with confidence, then perhaps will come a comeback. But 27 points is a long way to come back. And you see there, Chuck Bucin having a very good day. 12 for 18, 206, and two touchdowns. Cliff Stout just under 50% for 62 yards. The Philadelphia Stars defense have really been holding the opponent's quarterbacks to about a 57, 56 uh, percent completion ratio. Uh, and that's, you know, not too bad. Do you know who has not been heard from at all in this ballgame? I mean, really. It's Joe Cribbs. Uh, uh, Joe Cribbs was, is on, was rolling along, gaining almost 1,100 yards in the first half of the season. No uh, running back, as Jim Lampley pointed out at the very outset of the telecast today, that uh, no running back had ever gained 100 yards against Philadelphia. That includes last year. And today, uh, so far, Joe Cribbs is 5 for 15, and he's fumbled one time. Well, they've held Birmingham to only 43 yards rushing total, and they've been averaging uh, 95 yards uh, against the run. Their opponent's only getting 95 yards against the Philadelphia's defense. That is rated number one in the USFL. Miles Tannenbaum was growling well ago when he came walking by the window about something. I don't know what it was. I said, my gosh, what are you growling about? Your team's sitting on top of the world right now. Well, I'll tell you one thing. You're playing so well on the road. His wife or brother Tannenbaum usually comes down to all the games with him. He might leave her at home from now on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Roberta, if you're watching the game. <laughs> all right. Philadelphia will kick it off now. And again, Trout will have the wind at his back. As Birmingham works into it, Birmingham will have the wind in the fourth quarter. And I wouldn't think anybody will return this one, though Davey does get it up in the air, but the wind's got it down. They're going to take it wheel on back there, and that's three points. Three points. If they were given to him, <laughs> Dave Trout would surely take them. Every kicker tries that. When they on the kickoff, they love just to put it through the uprights if they can get it. And that you don't see it too often. Dave Trout goes to show you from that distance, from 40, 60 yards away, he's just putting them right through. Come in. Birmingham comes out with Toller, Jones, and Smith, three wide receivers, Cribs and Perry, behind Cliff Stout. Going right now without a tight end, and Stout's going to go to the air, and it is incomplete. Joey Jones trying to go way up to get it. Jonathan Sutton is 6'1", 195 pounds, and Joey is only 5'8", and that was a bit of a mismatch, and Sutton won. Yeah, he had that ball up in the air pretty good. He had number 51, Glenn Howard, inside linebacker coming across, and he was going to be underneath that, underneath Joy Jones, so Cliff had to get a little height on it. And again, Joy Jones is only 5'8". He had to go up pretty good to at least have a chance of bringing it down. Second and 10. Well, they try Perry, and he's got a yard before Fielder. Don Fielder brings him down. They make one yard. Well, they have just shut down the Birmingham Fielder offense. Made the tackle. Dave Purifoy, one of the reasons that the Philadelphia defense has shut down the Birmingham offense, we, uh, Mike Adams is going to talk to him after this play. David getting a breather right now. pass is badly thrown, badly thrown. I should rephrase my comment that Purifoy plays for Birmingham and uh, was one of the, he was one of the principal people that, uh, well, go back to last week, for example, in the Denver ball game when, uh, when Birmingham went out to Denver and won a 31 to 14 ball game. Purifoy and company, they just were as good as you, they had to be in that particular ball game with Penrose coming back and here today, 
Uh, Purifoy has been uh, the key player. He's made more, I think, more tackles than anybody else on the defensive front. That but, Denver, uh, that Denver team is very physical, and it cost them, even though they got a big, big win. Parsons is knocked down. Parsons is knocked down by Mike Lush as Lush came in trying for the block, and that'll give Birmingham Stallions the first down because no one touched the football. No one got a piece of that punt. If you get a piece of the ball, you can deck the punter, but uh, Lush did not get a piece of it. And so Birmingham gets a break on the play, though Parsons took a pretty good whack for it. Parsons, the punter, number 87. You see the pressure coming from the, from the left and from the right. They go in the air. They'll right there. Offense. Rushing the kicker. Defense. They still can't get a break. <laughs> oh. They still can't get a break. Offsetting penalties, illegal formation on the offense, and roughing the kicker on the defense, so Parsons has to come back out and try it again. Again, Mike Lush, they're going for the block. They always teach you if you go for the block, you have to anticipate where that ball is going to come off the foot of the punter, and that's the point you go for. I'm looking, I said one, two, three, four people in the backfield. I'm trying to see where the five, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven people Somebody might have been lined up a yard off, though. Yeah. Well, that's certainly not a very good kick for Bob Parsons. He got it up in the wind. He didn't have any rotation on it. The wind just blew it out of bounds. So here's Philadelphia to start the second half of play with a first down at the Birmingham 36. And Philadelphia goes to work at the Birmingham 36. Olsen and Dunnick, both tight ends are in as they go to a one-back offense. Bring Harris back in motion, go to Bryant. And Bryant got four. Old pro Tom Banks is the man that anchors the offensive front for the Birmingham Stallions. Here he is now with Mike Adam Lynn. Let's see if we can find out what his ideas are on the futility. Keith, uh, you don't have to have a master's degree in football to figure out what happened in this game. Tom, you said something interesting to me, that they have taken you out of your game. Explain. Well, uh, of course, we're the same type of team, ball control kind of teams, and uh, now we get behind. Uh, we just have to try to get to catch up as any best way we can, and uh, they're able to run a lot of stunts and games that they wouldn't be doing if we were in that ball control kind of offense. So, you know, by getting ahead, uh, we, we made some mistakes early, gave them the ball in good field position. We got terrible position, and they just jumped out on us quick. Okay, hang in there. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. Tom's been around a long time. He's right about being taken out of your game. Once you are taken out of your game and you have to fight from behind, the, the defensive team feels a little more freedom to go out and try things uh, a little more creatively. You look at that elbow. Whose elbow is that? That's Chris Stout's elbow. He uh, looks like that bursa sack has got a little fluid on it. Sure does. Yeah. I've had a couple of those and uh, you know, it looks pretty bad. It looks, you know, like it's more pain than what it really is. Just some fluid on the elbow, and never really caused any pain. While I had it. Uh, for the first down, and it's uh, first down for Philadelphia by about two inches. As, as I was uh, saying about Tom Banks being taken out of your game, you know, it now puts you in the position where offensively you're channeling your game into one area. In this case, Birmingham trying to catch up very quickly, putting the ball in the air which means the defense knows what you have to do and they can just maneuver everything in that direction. They can cut that off because they have less to defend. Stars, first down, Birmingham 26 now. That's Fitzky spinning around and going the other way. And they run it with Riley. And he's inside the 10, down to the 7, first down and goal to goal, Philadelphia. Well, he goes, he gets down there, he's tackled by number 58, Taft Sales. But he just goes right through the center of that line, picks up a big hole, and, and as you see here on the replay, it's Oten Comiskey. Ron Calder is the left guard. They get a good block for him here. They're cutting people down. Pure is on the ground. They're getting double teaming the linebackers. And Riley doesn't make any sharp cuts. He's just weaving back and forth, getting through people. Now he's down inside the 10-yard line. From the seventh. Kelvin Bryant to the four. Mike Murphy, 56, anchors him. He lunges ahead three yards. Carl Peterson stopped in for a second during halftime, too, and he said that his offensive team asked him if Chuck Vichini would continue to play under the heat and, and taking the abuse of, of a physical football game here against Birmingham. 
if not his backup, if his backup would come in, he said no, he's going to stay in the ball game because they want to establish a, more of a ball control offense, get the running game going, and it looks like that's just what they're able to do. Second down and goal from the four for the Stars. Yusina lobs into the end zone. It's Folsom, and it's a touchdown for Philadelphia. There's a flag, Keith, on the left side of the field. I don't know who it's against. Way over here in the corner. The way things have been going so far, we can expand. We kind of think it might be against Birmingham. <laughs> but they get a break. Touchdown is erased by a procedure call. You know, I hate to keep saying it, Keith, and keep talking about it. Maybe this is the last time I'll say it during the ball game. But when we're looking at field position, the average starting field position in this ball game, and I'll tell you after the official motion. makes this announcement. Offense number 80, still second down. Ken Dunning. Birmingham's average possession, Keith, has been on their own 16-yard line. With Harvin and Riley lined up behind Fusina. Donovan and Fitzke on the left side, and Fusina looks to throw it. He almost picked off by Fred Bohannon. Pass intended for David Riley. And I really don't know why in the world Fred didn't come down with it. Neither does he. Oh, Fred came back on that ball, and it was a perfect pass from the pickoff, and then get a little exercise running down the sideline in the opposite direction. How about but he, 95 yards? 95 yards worth, but he came in, and you'll see it here on the replay, he comes in with the position body position of trying to knock it down his hands go up his hands go up above the football to bat it down and that's just what he does he bats the ball down instead of catching it it is third and goal from the nine <laughs> corner route doesn't work for Harris Harris had gotten away from David Evans but the pass was overthrown I'll tell you, David Evans, if the ball had been thrown a little bit shorter, where it could have been a catchable pass, they would have called pass interference on him because he dove right out to try and knock the receiver away. So Dave Trout comes in for his fourth field goal try of the day. He's hit three. 29, 29, 25. This will be from 26. Ah, uh, Dave Trout loves it. Just racking up those points. Came in the ball game with 59 to his credit. He'll get sit first class going home. <laughs> 27 yards. He's got it. Well, last year, because he was the league's leading scorer, he got a Cadillac for a year. Really? <laughs> yeah, that was the award they gave him at the banquet. 10.53 to play. Third quarter, it's now 33-3 Philadelphia. I don't think there are any football fans anywhere who can make more noise when the home team is having success than they do here at Legion Field in Birmingham, and we've seen a lot of Alabama and Auburn games over the years played here. But the crowd that's in excess of 50,000, and we're just kind of guessing at 55 today, they've had very, in effect, nothing to cheer about so far. Here's the kick by Dave Trout. And this is going to be returned from the goal line by Earl Gant. And Gant goes helmet to helmet up about the 22-yard line and 21-yard line, and there he's brought down. The crowd officially is, uh, they don't use turnstiles here, so that's, uh, that's an estimate. A 49-5, and it looks a little bigger. Well, the Birmingham defensive people are on the bench now, and I, you know there are two reasons. One, they'd love to see the offense go right on down and score a touchdown. But the other thing that they're hoping for is the offense stays out there a little while so they can get some rest. The second one right now is <laughs> the one that they're hoping for the most. 86-degree day in Birmingham. Stout back on first down to throw it. He's caught, and he is pulled down, and it is called a sack. He was never really thrown down. He was in the grasp of George Cooper. What a draw. Joe Cribbs, for the first time today, breaks it out big. That's exactly what Jim Mora was talking about before the game today, is that we can't make, let Cribbs make the big plays on us. Well, they haven't until <laughs> now. But uh, now means that Philadelphia is sitting on a 30-point lead. George Cooper is the man that finally brought him down, but he gets a great hole because it's a, it's a draw. They're waiting for the pass. Just look at the way that Joe Cribbs just scooting along down the middle of the field. Just out-kicking players, getting down there. 
195, and a lot of count. Now 41 yards for Cribs. The stout goes back to the air. He's got Jones. Throws it too high for Joy. But look at all the white shirts that are around it. Four of them around it. Well, he threw it, tried to get it to Joy Jones, and Mike Lush was back there. Uh, Jonathan Sutton, the cornerback, he was also back there. Antonio Gibson, number 23, was there. Second down and 10 from the 39. Stout has now missed six straight passes. 9.25 to play in the third quarter. Run the draw again, and there's no chance. Pete Kugler just steps into the gap and wraps his arms around Cribs, and Cribs couldn't go anywhere. He lost about a yard. Well, it was successful that one time, so why not come back with it? Greens have also got to block Kugler. That's right. <laughs> Maybe they didn't forget; they just couldn't get it done. But that, notwithstanding, I'm surprised that. Uh, well, I think one of the things that Birmingham could do is go to the screens a little bit more, a high percentage pass, with the defense of Birmingham, uh, Philadelphia, looking for a deeper pass. They're one out of seven on third down conversion. Stout's pass is overthrown to Smith, and Jones, who was down the sidelines, couldn't get to it either. And so you got kicking time again. Parsons coming out. I got to think we're going to see Lane. Uh, it's, it's possible. Uh, because at first half of football, I don't think I can, you could put the blame on the quarterback and say that well, it was Chris Stout's fault that the offensive team has not been more productive. Now it's been a tough afternoon. No pressure on Parsons this time, and a little better kick. Garcia Lane back at the 20. And uh, missed by a couple, gets back to about the 25. So 33 to 3, Philadelphia. That graphic there tells you something of uh, the performance by Philadelphia today. They've got 101 yards, first one to do it this season against Birmingham, and I would imagine they're going to add to that right now. I'll be very surprised if they don't just run it and run it and run it until Birmingham makes them throw it. 33 to 3, the Stars lead it, and this is Kelvin Bryant. Oh, wasn't that a block? Gomiski <laughs> out in front. Comiskey get out in front, or excuse me, number 63, George Gilbert, which Gilbert the man who got out yeah. in front. Back up to Ron Calder. Kelvin Brown will take the ball in the sweep. You see the good left guard. He's pulling just in the middle of the picture. Brian gets behind him. Now watch, he'll just stay behind him. He'll follow him. He could cut up the middle of the field right now, but he stays behind him until the block is made. Then he's on his own. Kelvin Bryant kind of stutter stepping there a little bit. Did doing any good. Number 41, Fred Bohannon made the tackle. Got a first down, moving it from the 25 out to the 42. Fumble. Birmingham's got it. Looks like Fred Bohannon. Fred Bohannon lined up at the strong safety spot. He was coming in, going to make the play on the run. Number 41, Fred Bohannon picked up. The fumbled ball, the ball was fumbled on the snap from Bart Oates to Chuck Pusina. Pops straight up in the air. Bohannon, you can't see him. He's at the left of your screen. The ball pops up in the air. It's going to kick out to the left. You see it bouncing there. Fred Bohannon right there now comes into the picture. He dives on it. Turnover and a big break. Ball on the 45-yard line. Birmingham Stallions into the The Stallions will know what to do. They haven't been on that side of the field enough today. There must be strange territory to them. <laughs> Joe Cribbs looking to sweep. That's a block. Can't turn the corner. Uh, he got a good block. Got some good blocking out in front of him. But number 59, Bunning came over. Number 51, Glenn Howard. And number 54, Sam Mills. Playing their linebacking positions well. Reading the play. Then sliding with the flow. Now, all the action on the offensive line will come there. The defensive down people. You see Bunning comes in. He takes on the blocker, spins off. Number 54, Sam Mills. He's sliding to the outside. You see Bunning now in position. Mills and Howard all in on the tackle. Second down and eight. Cribs got two. Cribs 
Cribbs again looking for some place to run. Cuts it back into the middle and gets to the 40. Just over the 40 for a couple of more yards. So it'll be third down and close to six yards. Now that pass, that particular play had flea flicker, one of those trick plays. Yeah, it did. <laughs> uh, all about it. The offensive line, the offensive line, they're not charging out as if it were, it's a run, but nobody's crossing the line of scrimmage. Everyone's back. They're not downfield, but they have three receivers who are downfield. Joe Cribbs has that ball cradled and is running as if he had no intention of throwing the football. Call it third down and five. Pass is incomplete, intended for Smith. As Stout was under some heat. Number 23, Antonio Gibson, came in on the blitz from his defensive cornerback position. He came right through the alley that Chris Stout was looking at to throw the football. Jim Smith hadn't turned around, so he had no chance to make the play. And on fourth down, Riley Dodge is leaving his offensive team in. Fourth and five, Cribbs comes out. Gant is in. Well, apparently he's got Earl in there, hopefully to either provide some protection. He's not a bad pass receiver either. He's got the ball. And he isn't going anywhere. Well, now that's a funny call. Well, I, I think what he tried to do, Keith, was take advantage of the fact that on fourth and five, obvious passing situation. If everyone were back and taking deeper drops, that play might have had a chance to work. But as you mentioned about this ball club, they were going uh, a little bit too much, you know, east to west and not going straight down the field. They didn't get the block and they make the play work. Here's some more bad news for Birmingham. Leon Perry, their blocking and uh, starting fullback, and a key man in that offensive backfield is down on the field. With five minutes and 31 seconds to play in the third quarter. My only question about, I'm not questioning the call, I'm questioning taking uh, your best runner out, Cribs putting in Gant. Now Earl Gant's a good football player and I've watched him for years including his days in Missouri but he is a step slower than Joe Cribbs. Yeah, maybe two steps slower than Joe Cribbs. They lead 33-3 to as Fusina gives it to David Riley and Riley tumbles down as he rolls over the top of Max Jones number 51. They're still working on Leon Perry. Trying to check my neck. Yeah. yeah. Makes me nervous. Yes, sir. Dave Riley now with five carries. That's a total of 48 yards in the ball game today. Another bad average? Nope. I wonder if he's still breathing hard. <laughs> <laughs> Got six. Second down, four. flag as Bryant picks up enough yardage for a first down. Bohannon brought him down. Ed Humphrey will define it for us. Holding offense. Keith, you, you saw where Pisky was going in motion? Yep. And he kind of stutter stepped like he wanted to go upfield. The ball had been snapped. Finally it was snapped and he was able to turn up. A lot of those plays are designed to be called and the ball snapped. As you look at that score, the Gamblers, 21. Michigan Panthers 28. Gamble starting to come back a little bit. Uh, so that that receiver who goes in motion can make a block on the cornerback. If you get beyond him. Holding. Offense number 89. Still second down. Steve Folsom tied in. If you get beyond the man you're supposed to block and they snap the ball, then the quarterback has in effect taken you out of the play. That time, if you see uh, Pitsky had a very difficult time getting back to make his block. again on second down and 14 and he goes and gets first down anyway well, David Evans number 26 and 55 Herb Spencer make the tackle Kelvin must be getting close to 100 now isn't he he's what, got 85 yards he just glided down the field on that run it didn't seem to take much effort on this part he had a good hole good blocking Cut on the bridge of the nose of Leon Perry, and we were told, so told he has suffered what appears to be a minor jaw injury. So he took a pretty good wallop from somebody. Alan Harvin is in now as the beat back out of the eye. Bryant goes out. Turn Riley loose. 
And David goes for a first down at the 31 of Birmingham. Running in behind uh, Gilbert and Oates. Again, that's the same play he ran earlier in the ball game where he got more yards running down the center of the field. Again, going behind the blocking of a very strong offensive line that seems to be wearing down the defense. You see, number 76, Bill Bourne, was being blocked out very effectively there. He picks up a good block downfield. And then he gets the tackle. Immediately raised his hand and said, help! And Rodenberger <laughs> comes in at fullback. This is Harbin. And Alan Harbin runs for another Philadelphia first down. Close to the Birmingham 18, and they are doing it at will now. Oh, Alan Harbin was running behind... Uh, how, sh how shall we describe Irving in number 75? I mean... <laughs> At 6'6", 270 pounds, and a man who just seems to play with so much intensity. And right here, showing a little bit of his foot speed. You see him pull right there, big number 75. He's getting around the corner, no one to block inside, so he keeps going. Looking for somebody on the outside, he takes one, tries to take on two at the same time. Harvin benefiting just short of the 18. A yard or so, maybe two. Bill Rowe, who had just come over. Bill Rowe out of Colorado played last year with the Boston Breakers and uh, was up at Memphis for a time. And with all the injuries that Birmingham has had, they bring him over. Andy Canavino has also joined the Birmingham roster out of Michigan. Believe if I remember, Andy might have been the all-time career tackler at Michigan under Bo Schoenbecker. Second down, call it eight. You seen it? Bolson's out of bounds, short of the 12. Hit by number 41, Fred Bohannon. Fred had him pinned on the sideline, so rather than rather than actually wrapping his arms around him and making a tackle, decided he just Hit him hard enough to keep him going out of bounds. 208 to play in the third quarter. Number eight. And the Birmingham Stallions desperately need help. Well, it's a little late. You need a miracle. Well, we've seen the Philadelphia Stars come back. Not from 30 now. This is Harvin, and Herb Spencer gets a hold of him, and finally gets a little help, and they get him down just inside the 10. So, let's see. They had to go inside the 9 for the first down. They don't have the first down. Spencer, ready to tackle. And it's worth it. Oh, my goodness. That's bad news for David Riley. Possible separated shoulder. Ah. Oh, that's a bummer, isn't it? Yeah, it is. After, you know, and playing so well, so far in the season. On fourth, then a yard and a half, they'll go. Bryant is back in. Then Rodenberger over there is the extra blocker on the right side. Give it to Bryant. And he's close. <laughs> That's a first down. Stallions were trying to turn him into a wishbone there for a minute. But, Jeez, that's, that's a real tough mark they gave him on that particular play. It, it might be close. It might be very close to the first down. Well, he had to go inside the nine. Where's the ball? Oh, oh it's, it's inside the nine. It's inside the nine. Now watch Kelvin Brown when he gets his ball. He's just, the line of scrimmage is just the other side of the 10-yard line. He's a strong running back. He goes up in the air. He's got the ball out in front of him. I'd say, I'd say he's closer to the seven yard line or the eight yard line at least in the air with that football. Birmingham holds and takes over. Well, a little help and a little break. I think we got screwed on that. Good job. 
<laughs> That's a well, graphic description of it. <laughs> Thank you, Coach Mora. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> we'll be right back. Oh, L.A. has won off three straight wins. We've got a new quarterback in the ball game now for Birmingham. Bob Lane in replacing Cliff Stout. Stout with a puffed up elbow. Has had a bad day. Mainly because he's had to work so deep in his own territory. Very poor field position. Bob Lane, 6'3", 200, out of northeast Louisiana. Comes in at quarterback. And he's a good one. He's a good one. A change of pace right here. That quarterback might be just enough to shake up the defense of Philadelphia. Ken Paulson makes his first appearance of the day as well. And Lane back, dumps it off to Joe Cribbs. Cribbs is out there, gets a little help, gets up near the 20 out, and he's down on the 20. And it's a first down for Birmingham. For a second, Chiefs, I thought that young Bobby Lane was going to get caught trying to set the screen up. They run a play action fake to Cribbs there. He's rolling out to his right. You see number 59, John Bunning, coming in and forces Bobby Lane to hold up. Well, that's by design. He wants to throw back on the screen, and Joe Cribbs gets some good blocking out in front. First down. Stallions are now up on the 20. Lane's pass is incomplete. Pass was intended for Cribbs, and 47, Garcia Lane, and Mike Lush, 27, were over there, and Sam Mills was also lurking in the neighborhood. Well, they had their leading receiver, number 86, Jim Smith over there, and Joe Cribbs on the same side, and you put those two together anywhere on the football field, and you'll draw a crowd. Now we're told that David Riley has a bruised shoulder only. We hope that is correct. When you see the quarterbacks like Birmingham's has been doing all day, and right there, uh, Bobby Lane did the same thing that Cliff Stout had been doing, they're hitching, hitching, hitching. That means that somebody in the Philadelphia secondary is playing awfully well. Sure. Nothing there as William Fuller steps in to stop Joe Cribbs, and he goes down right on the line of scrimmage at the 20, and time is running out now in the third quarter of play. So the Philadelphia Stars lead after three quarters dominating the game by a score of 33 to 3. And we'll continue after this message. Passes away, passes incomplete, intended for Jim Smith. He was being covered by Mike Lush. Pete Kugler broke through to put some pressure on the passer. Now it's punting time. Let's check in again with Mike Adams. Keith and Lynn, the word on David Run Riley, the running back, is that he has a mild shoulder bruise, something that has happened to him on and off this season. It's the AC joint and the irritation of it. But just talking to David, he wants to get back in this game. He knows he's on a roll, and he wants to go in and play some more good football. Mike, he's not too tired? Not too tired at all. When you're, on a, you're up by 33-3, uh, to three, <laughs> you never get tired. You know that, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. Parsons in the punt with the wind at his back. Low kick, not much on it. Takes a Birmingham bounce where it is fielded by Garcia Lane. And Lane is thrown down at the 49. 43 yard punt by Parsons. Garcia is a little hot. It goes along, I think, with the really the, the simple matter of truth for the Birmingham Stallion is don't make your mistakes early in the bowl game. And they did, and it's cost them a field position. Philadelphia's taking advantage of everything that's been laid in front of them. You see that? Dumps it off to Alan Harvin, and Harvin now is knocked out from under the football by Fred Bohannon. So the pass is incomplete. Well, it goes back, I think, really honestly, to the first punch, Sean Landetta's punch. He got a good bounce on, hit a knuckleball, and it rolled and rolled, and uh, let it roll dead on the one. And really, from that point on, it's just simply been all Philadelphia. Just short of the 49 for Philadelphia on second down and 10. Their own 49. Pitsky, first down at the 39 of Birmingham. Pitsky ran, ran a very, very good route. Now, when he turned around for what was obviously a little hook pattern he was not open now watch as he turns around and someone underneath people behind 
he comes back to the football, steps right in front of the defender, and that is what causes him to be open. Fusina just waited for him, waited for him to turn the corner and come back. It's a nice, neat little pass, picks up the first down, and keeps the drive alive. Rodenberger and Harvin are the setbacks behind Chuck Fusina. And that's Harvin. And he's to the 36 for three yards. At 28-21 in uh, Michigan between Houston and Michigan. Big ball game in the Central Division. San Antonio and Chicago now. That's closed up some as Evans is bringing Chicago back. It's now 23-21 and Memphis, Washington in overtime in a 10-10 game. Walter Lewis scoring to tie it up and put him in overtime. And here's Brian Thomas now in the ball game. Brian Thomas out of pit. 5-10-180. And he carries the football to about the 35. So Brian Thomas, who has been brought along rather slowly, has had now 14 carries with the Philadelphia Stars for a total of, uh, what do you get there, two. So he picked up 53 yards. Well, with the score being 33-3, to three, this is the kind of game that the coach, Jim Moore, enjoys because he can now get some of his backup personnel into the ball game and get some experience. Brian started under Jackie Sherrill at Pitt, finished under Foge Fazio. It is third down and a good six. Yusina gets it away to Herbert Harris and then takes a lick from a blitzing David Evans. And the pass is complete. Good for the first down near the Birmingham. 27. Oh, it's a blitz control route. No, they don't mark it that far. It's marked at the 29, and they wanted to measure it. I saw the one linesman standing down at the 27, but the other one's holding the football back there near the 29. Looks like the ball is inside the 29, and if it is, it will be a first down. be at home with Jacksonville for their next game. Philadelphia will be at home with Los Angeles. The Los Angeles-Philadelphia game will be one of two we'll cover next week, the other one being Michigan and New Orleans. I don't think those breakers are through for the year. No, I don't think so. I think last week's game against Philadelphia, Philadelphia played excellent football, just a tough game for them. They made too many mistakes. This is Brian Thomas trying to outrun number 21, Dennis Woodbury, and he's got no chance. Woodbury had the angle and chases him out of bounds short of the line of scrimmage with 11 minutes and 34 seconds to play in the ball game. Well, yesterday when I watched them practice, watched the Birmingham Stallions practice a little bit, they did seem to be a little bit tight, uh, a little tense, 9 and one record going into a big match, and you know, I think some of that's shown here in this afternoon. Let's not take away all the credit, however, that Philadelphia does deserve. I mean, they're playing a great ball game. Harvin is in there now at the fullback position. As Fusina goes back to throw, goes deep with it to Collier. And Willie can't get it. Woodbury, he had about a half a step on Woodbury and just could not quite get himself in a position to lean or jump for the ball. Uh, both of them are running full stride. Collier looking at the ball coming at him. Wanted to get on his horse. Had to keep that speed going just to stay up with it. If you've seen it, you saw him get up on his toes as he let that one go to give it some loft. Wanted to drop this one right in over the, over the shoulder of number 21 Woodbury. But it was just out beyond the outstretched arms of Willie Collier also. Third down and 12. Collier again and can't come up with it and they get tangled up. Evans and Collier get tangled up. They may call that one against Willie Collier. He might. It looked like Willie Collier might have 
No. Against seven. Goes against seven. It looked to me like Willie Kyers might have just slowed up and pushed off a bit in an effort not to outrun this pass. You see, he gets outside. Well, of he's trying to turn around, though. Now, let's see where where the... Boy, his arm goes out. Evan's arm goes, goes out, and I guess that's why they call it. But look at Willie Collier. He's looking back at the ball. You see other... His arm goes back. He tries to go over the top. He bumps the helmet of Evans. I don't know. That's, that's a tough call to make. Well, the man is entitled to an effort at the ball. And I thought Evans might very well have denied him of the effort to catch the ball. Yeah, but the defensive back is also allowed to hold this position. He had position there, and the receiver can't go through him in an effort to get the ball. It's a first down for Philadelphia as Rodenberger carries it from the 17 and gets it to the 13. Picked up four on that carry. It has been all Philadelphia. Their record's now going to go to 10 and 1. Birmingham will drop to 9 and 2, still holding a one-game lead over the Tampa Bay Bandits. New Orleans is at 7 and 3. New Orleans plays Monday night at home with Arizona. Arizona now getting some pressure out in that Pacific Division in second place from Los Angeles. Los Angeles is now 5 and 6, and Arizona's got the win in order to stay in second place. This is Alan Harvin. And Harvin hits it into the 10-yard line and makes the 9. Andy Canavino in the ball game now for Birmingham gets his name called. 6'1", 225, 24 years of age, number 57 out of Michigan. Here's Andy. Philadelphia team is not slowing down, Keith. Unlike some other people we've seen in the past who have obtained big leads, they continue to be very aggressive. Not getting overly conservative, marching down the field, long drives, trying to put more points on the scoreboard. Yusina rolls out, sends Donovan toward the corner, and throws short, intended for Folsom, and a good defensive play by number 24, Chuck Clinton. As it bought, bounced off Folsom's hand. Uh, he's a little disappointed. Now, I don't know if it was tipped or not, but... Yeah, I think Clinton got a piece of it. Chuck Yusina here rolls out, and Chuck has got a lot of running room if he should decide to do just that on this play. He can put pressure on the defense just by coming forward. He gets a receiver open, and no, nope, I don't think anybody touched it. It just bounced right off the hands of Steve Wilson. 26-yard field goal try coming up now from Dave Trout. If he makes it, he'll have five, and that will tie the USFL record. 29, 29, 25, 26, and 26. He got it. So Dave Trout. Hits his fifth field goal in the ball game. From 29, 29, 25, 26, and 26, and it's 30. That big horse right there has been uh, a great part of the story, too. Uh, it's Irv Eatman, number 75. Dave Trout getting ready to kick off. He's 5'6", 165 pounds, but I think his right leg is four and a half feet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're right. This is Earl Gant of Missouri. And for the first time today, off a, a kick, the Stallions are able to get a reasonable field position out of it. The ball comes out near the 35. So there they'll go to work with Bob Lane at quarterback in relief of Cliff Stout. And it's at this point where Jim Mora, I'm sure, will play everybody he can possibly play to one rest people. One of the great dangers on a hot day like this, or any time really in an athletic contest, in football in particular, is when you, you get a little tired, fatigue sets in, that's when you get hurt. And he certainly doesn't want to get his people hurt. Chuck Fusina has been under a lot of pressure with the blitzing defense of Birmingham. He's been hit hard a couple of times. Lane's pass is away, and it is incomplete. Lush comes over and slaps it out of Jim Smith's hand. Uh, it would have been out of bounds. Lush, help from the rest of the Philadelphia secondary. 47, Garcia Lane. 56, George Cooper. It cut off most of the field forcing Jim Smith into the sideline and reducing the throwing length. Raleigh Dodge does not have in his offense, at least what we have seen today, any particular thing for the tight end down the middle. The tight end has not been a factor in this ballgame. I am I'm somewhat surprised. Heat's own. Lane gets it off. It's incomplete. 9.20 to play in the football game. Lane gives the ball to Joe Griff. 
And Joe weaves around and finds enough opening to get to about the 43. Well, here's the uh, little big man who's put himself in the USFL record book, Dave Trout with Mike Adams. Keith, about the only time we talk to kickers is when they choke a little bit, but Dave has done everything well this afternoon. You tie a USFL record with five field goals. Is your leg a little tired? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, but, you know, it's not that bad. I just want to thank the Lord that I got the opportunity and uh, great team. And uh, glad to be here. Okay. Great job. I'm kicking him to the wind, too. Thanks. It's about time. <laughs> takes a Birmingham bounce heading for the goal line they can't stop it rolls on in well that'll help Bob Parsons punting average for the day he had the wind at his back David Evans trying to slap it back out of there and couldn't do it but uh, the big kick has come too late 837 to play and 9 8 to 37 to play oh look at this Houston is caught up it's all even now at the Silverdome 28 28 uh, they were behind at one point, 21, 20. Uh, that was a heck of a ball game last Monday night between Los Angeles and Houston. Went overtime, and the L.A. pulled it out. But when Jim Kelly takes a snap, that bunch of receivers he's got, they're like a covey of quail. They just go, they're, they're, like, gone. they're like the bullets in a long-range rifle. They just fly. They're behind 21 nothing at one time. That's right. Tim Reardon is in at quarterback, and Brian Thomas at tailback, and Brian is on his way for his biggest run of his professional career. He goes out of bounds just about the 48 yard line. I'll tell you one thing, uh, Miles Tannenbaum and Carl Peterson, the owner and general manager of the Philadelphia Stars, left a few minutes ago and they were beaming. They look like a morning sun on a clear day. Jerry Sklar, the general manager of the Birmingham Stallions, came in and I'll give the man some class. He had a half a grip. <laughs> and that's pretty darn good. That's a lot under that's the circumstances. <laughs> I think he realizes that, as most people have seen the Birmingham team play, that even though they're behind 36-3, they're a much, much better football team, and they just have had some bad mistakes today. Well, I think they're a playoff team, I think, don't you? I think so. They just say they could, their offense couldn't get on track. Uh, they had poor field position throughout the day, and that gives the credit to the Philadelphia Stars special team. The only thing about that Southern Division, though, when you look at it, you got Birmingham is going to be nine and two, Tampa Bay eight and three, and New Orleans, if they win tomorrow night, will be uh, eight and three. Otherwise, they'll drop to seven and four against Arizona. But that's a tough division. Well, I think when you look at the talent that the teams that are playing in, in the Eastern Conference, that's where all the strength in the USFL is. I agree. Michigan might disagree with us. This is Thomas again. Ryan Thomas on second down and eight. Steps his way to about the 48. Get him two, two and a half. And Mike Perko makes the tackle. I'll tell you one thing. The guys who have been playing defense all day for Birmingham are going to sleep well tonight. Because <laughs> they've had a hard, long day. Uh, they're going to put a lot, a lot of the fluids in their body after this game is over with, too, because they've been on the field for so long. They're drained. They're in pretty good shape. I haven't seen too many people come out or, or heard anything about complaining of no craps. craps. No. It's third down and six. Fitzky in motion. Evans goes with him. Uh-oh. When Fitzky made the little juke step and stopped, the Birmingham uh, guys inside teed off, but uh, they didn't get there too soon. He had a quick snap. Ball handed to Brian Thomas, and Thomas gets to the 45. It was a matter very fractional as to whether or not they had uh, crossed the neutral zone. But you, when Fitzky made his little juke step on his in-motion move behind the quarterback, Spencer teed off. Well, unbeknown to Fitzky, his little juke was perfect timing to, to yeah. get them going. Landetta's punt. Oh, oh, look, at, look this. at this. Oh, when it's going right, it's all going right, isn't it? <laughs> you pray, a punter prays for a bounce like that. He could John Landella punts it. It just popped straight up in the air and died on the six yard. Jones comes off the field now. Toller comes in, and Cribbs has been relatively quiet. He's had one run of some size. And so far, still, no running back has gained 100 yards against this Philadelphia team since it was put together. That's Cribbs carrying, and he gets it up to the 12. So they'll be looking at third down and uh, about four. It also is the first time this season that any team has run for more than 100 yards. 
against the Birmingham Stallions, but Philadelphia long ago went past that total. Birmingham uh, has completed only one of its last 14 passes. So it's been an exercise in futility pretty much for the Stallions today. Don't count them out. It's a good football game. It's just been one of those days. And here's Lane back to throw. And goes down the middle for Cribs, and Joe's got it. He's got a first down. Out across the 40, up to the 42. Good little move there by Cribs after he made the catch. All he did was slow up a little bit, let one of the defenders shoot by him. He lines up here, just shading the, the outside of the offensive tackle. Gets down the middle of the field, wide open seam there. Number 20 is Mark McCants. He just juked there by waiting, let him run by. Of course, Philadelphia's in a position now with five minutes to play and leading by 33 points. They, all they're going to do is play center field. You can have everything underneath. Here's one to the sidelines to Smith, and Smith is caught and pinned down. Down on the Philadelphia 44-yard line. Brought down by Garcia Lane, and that's good enough for a Birmingham first down. Looking in now on other scores from around the USFL today. New Jersey won big, or is winning big. And the Washington Federals in overtime beat Memphis with a 29... No, I'm sorry. Memphis won that game, beating Washington 13-10. Walter Lewis ran in for the tying touchdown in uh, the closing seconds of the game, apparently. Now, Alan Duncan has kicked the field goal to win for the Memphis Silver. Lane goes down the middle with it. Joey Jones running after it. Got it. Touchdown. 44 yards. They were playing center field, number 37, R.L. Harris. Rookie from Stephen F. Austin. It's a man who was trying to cover. Joy Jones out of Alabama on the play. Joy Jones also a rookie. He is their big play man, averaging over, just over 20 yards per catch. You see him a catch, he's just looking at him. He gets inside of Harris and he's just running right by him, eyes on the football the whole time. Excellent pass by Bobby Lane. Touchdown. Birmingham will go for two. Scores now 36 to 9 with 4.13 to play in the football game. You've got timeout call by Philadelphia. So I don't think they had the right people out there or maybe not even enough people. So Philadelphia calls time as Sam Mills calls the time for the Stars and goes toward the sideline. Once you get Jones out there in a one-on, if it's a foot race, Jones has got a pretty good chance to win it. Hey, he does. And here, Bobby Lane gets excellent protection. He keeps a running back in to give him a little more time. We don't see a lot of people rushing. A lot of linebackers are spread out in the short zone. <laughs> Lane gets it off, and it's caught by Smith, and it's good for the two-point conversion. So that makes it a 36 to 11 football game as Jimmy Smith pulls it down. If the pass is on target, that's a very difficult pattern to defend. And Jimmy Smith has always been a pretty sure-handed fellow. And I think we might have an onside kick attempt here. All the receivers are up there for uh, Philadelphia, and it looks like Philadelphia has covered it. You had uh, some of the defensive backs, some of the receivers, including the tight end Folsom, up on the front line for the receiving team. And the Stars come up with the football at the Birmingham 48. Here's the speed merchant, Joey Jones, with Mike. Keith, I guess you could call your touchdown, Joey, a uh, confidence builder. I mean, it would be very easy to quit this team being down by 25 points now but uh, that was a, a perfect indication of what has made this Birmingham team special this year. Yeah, uh, I think we had a real, real slow game. Uh, this one, we come out and <laughs> made about all the mistakes you can make in one game, and we haven't made some mistakes like that in the, in the past. And, uh, that's what kept us winning. What we got to do is eliminate the mistakes that we made today and, uh, you know, forget this game and just start all over again. All right. Brian Thomas runs out of trouble, and he's finally put away by Taft Sales. Linebacker and right about the line of scrimmage. Looked like they had Thomas back across midfield, but he got away from a couple. Got away from a couple and 
only lost maybe half a yard instead of two or three. Block running at 3 yards five to play in the ball game. New Jersey rolls up 49 points today in beating Oklahoma 49 to 17. That is the biggest output of points by the general so far this season. Walker seems to be running well, 127 yards. Yeah, he had one big one too for 62. Tim Reardon running around and is finally caught from behind by Max Jones and brought down. So Reardon out of Temple getting some playing time, trying to scramble away and find somebody downfield and he couldn't get loose. He was looking for Herbert Harris. And Max Jones out of Massachusetts was rushing in there on a little bit of a blitz. And Reardon started to run. I don't think Reardon realized he was so close behind him. Mm. Game has changed. Used to be when the quarterback ran, you didn't have to worry about defensive linemen and the linebackers catching him from behind. These days, <laughs> you better have two sets of eyes. Third down and eight now for Tim Reardon as he drops back. Gets his pass away, drills Herbert Harris with it, and Herbert's got a first down inside the 30 of Birmingham. Two minutes and 15 seconds on the clock. I'm sure that Philadelphia will let it run down to the two-minute mark, take the timeout, and decide what play to call. And that's what they're going to do. So two minutes to go in the football game on the timeout. It is Philadelphia 36, Birmingham 11. We'll be back for the final two minutes in a moment. Tonight's and today's news. This is Brian Thomas carrying the ball, picks his way through the crowd, turns in a good solid run down inside the 15, but you've got a penalty flag thrown back up around the line of scrimmage. So look out for that one. It may be wiped out. For those of you out on the West Coast, American sportsman, it's holding against Philadelphia. You'll see uh, the first American attempt to scale Mount Everest without the aid of any supplementary oxygen. There's been some oxygen used on the field today, I would think, in this kind of heat and humidity. Quite a bit. Story on Joe Cribbs today and recapping uh, the dominance of Philadelphia and his part of the story. Joe got his no, over 100 yards, yards. Yard. 111 yards, but 54 Holding of the 111 offense, yards. Number 80. Still first down. Came uh, in pass receiving. He caught four passes for 54 yards, ran 12 times for 457. Now, just for... Um, a lot of backs, that'd be a pretty good day. Not Joe Cripps. Not Joe Cripps. Not even close to being decent. They back him up near the 40, and Reardon gives to Brian Thomas. Thomas, well, he's getting his feet wet with some authority. He's got a touchdown. The ball carrier for Philadelphia covers 39 yards and a touchdown. I tell you, Brian Thomas will come in handy. He's a tough little guy. Yeah, he'll, he'll be a little bit more than handy. <laughs> Brian Thomas getting an opportunity to play here where most of the time he sits on the bench and watches Kelvin Bryant and Alvin Harvin, Alan Harvin. This time he takes the ball after having a big run, nullified by a penalty, goes straight up the middle, good blocking by the offensive line, and crosses the goal line for another score. And Bryant's got 69 yards now on seven carries and a touchdown. We'll be in doing some lobbying next week with Jim Moore of a little more playing time. I bet. Reardon holds it, and Dave Trout kicks it. And Dave Trout has taken a run uh, up the scoring ladder today, too. He's had a big day. Five field goals, plus the extra points. He scored 19 points in the ballgame. Island well, to the 59, and you've got 78 points now for Dave Trout on the season. Jim Moore has to be pleased. 43 points for the Philadelphia Stars. You've got a minute and 43 seconds to play in the ball game. We're winding it down. The kick goes into the end zone, through the end zone, and will be brought back. And looking at the scoring, now Trout had 59 coming in. I don't know how many points Herschel <coughs> Walker scored today. I know he got at least two touchdowns. He got three touchdowns. So Herschel had 62 points. Plus 18, he has 80, so he'll still be on top of the uh, scoring in the USFL. But Trout's going to be right there with uh, 78, and his uh, 19 points in today's ball game is a game record for a kicker in the USFL. Little guy used to kick down in the Amazon jungle when he lived in Brazil before he came up to Pittsburgh. Well, not 
in the junk press, but carrying the football is Earl Camp from Birmingham. Two yards as he tries to cut it back against the grain. He can't get much out of it. And the Stallions right now, I guess, just willing to let this thing run on out and get this thing uh, over with and, uh, and as soon as possible get it out of their memory. Yeah, now, the this... lesson to be learned here is, uh, is simply don't get yourself wound too tight and don't make too many mistakes too soon, especially against a good football team. Now, this is not just one of those games you want to say, well, we'll, take it, we'll forget about it tomorrow. You want to take it out to the cemetery and bury it. Yes. <laughs> Put a mark on it and leave it unmarked. Hope it never comes back. Bob Lane's pass is intercepted, thrown right into the hands of Glenn Howard. The ball was thrown behind the intended receiver. Earl Gant, I think, was the man for whom the ball was intended. And suddenly, all of a sudden, here's a gimme for Glenn Howard. Houston and Michigan have now gone to overtime in their ball game at 28-28. That's a big ball game in that Central Division. They were tied for the lead. Here's the pass by Lane now, and it's thrown behind the receiver. And uh, Glenn Howard is in the right place at the right time. You know what the problem is in a game like this, Keith? A minute and three seconds left on the clock. And more than likely, or a possibility that the quarterback will take the ball and flop on it. Let the clock run out. But if you hand it off to a running back like Brian Thomas, he's going to try for a touchdown again. Brilliant. Except this time it's Jeff Rodenberger, and he'll try too. And he picks up some yardage out of it, moving the ball from the 30 two down to about what the 24 eight yards 50 seconds 49 on the clock running down but when you when you run up a score like that whether it's a coach's idea or just a player's going for it trying to get a touchdown playing hard all the time it stays in the back of the in the back of your mind when you do that to a team and it gives them a little something else to want to come back and meet this team again gather it up raleigh dodge Head coach of the Birmingham Stallions, coached in Philadelphia, excuse me, coached in Pittsburgh for the Steelers, coached in New England for the Patriots for a while. Not pleased, he knows he has a better football team, but he'll have some words for him when it's all over. That's Rodenberger carrying, and the clock is winding down now, and this one's just about history. The Birmingham Stallions record will drop to 9-2, and two. the Good Philadelphia Stars. Way to kick that thing. Go to 10-1. And Dave Trout scores 19 points for a league record for a place kicker. And the game's over with a final score. The Philadelphia Stars, 43. The Birmingham Stallions, 11.